Oh, this debate is gonna be really tricky for Xander. This is gonna be a, whew, this is gonna be one. Good luck. That, I mean, in the very same passage, you talk about how- Oh no, God. oh no, dude, not good. I hate when people compare depression, cancer, all these other things to trans. Well, it's absolutely comparable As because we can- Let her finish, let her finish. Why does she hate it? Let her hang herself with her own words. Don't cut her off. Why is it not comparable? With all As data. If someone chooses to identify as depressed or detransitions from being depressed later. Well, no there one chooses no to have gender dysphoria. And notice how she frames him as being the bad guy. Like, why are you trying to drag me into debate about trans people? I just wanted to talk about my book. Like, that's what you brought me here for. It's rhetorically effective to make him seem like the kind of like aggressive debate bro. No, why wouldn't you focus on the other thing? Why wouldn't you focus on the depression? No, why would you go down the cancer route? Oh no, you took, that, that wasn't even like a choice. You didn't even have the option to f that up. Why would you do this? <laughs> oh no. Oh, he picked the wrong one. I need you guys to be more excited in chat, okay? We're back after like a week long vacation. Welcome back, Feels Okay Man. It's fun to stay at the D dot G G. Right guys? <clears throat> All right, how are we doing? Damn, also, you guys are so mean to this guy. I feel like um, maybe it's just me, or maybe I empathize with him as a fellow content creator, but like, it sounds to me like, if I was in your position and I was writing, okay? This is what my post would sound like. <clears throat> Xander Hall debate with Lauren Southern uh, goes very wrong, and it'd be like, <clears throat> I watched the Xander Hall debate with Lauren Southern and man, it seems like he stumbled over a lot of things. Definitely needs to improve on some things in the future. Probably not the greatest platforming of her. Um, and he ends up letting her get away with a lot of dumb Something like that, right? This seems to be what happened. I haven't watched it yet. But when you guys read it, it's like, Xander Hall, young, retarded, 21 year old, lost child, stumbles into internet debate arena and gets eviscerated by white nationalist Nazi Lauren Southern that bends him over her knee and fucking destroys him in the internet arena blood sports. What a disgusting and horrible display. If I wasn't so far left, I would have told this guy to kill himself 400 times by now because of how absolutely fucking embarrassing this guy's performance was. How can he even show his face on the fucking internet without putting a paper bag over it first with the label dumb fuck all over it like that's your guys is like criticism is like insane it's like oh my god just chill jesus somebody posts is like man i don't know he's kind of young and maybe a little dumb and then like the next reddit posts xander hall being 21 is not a legitimate excuse for his massive fucking failure at dealing with lawrence like oh my god just chill jesus chill just calm down it's okay, all right? <laughs> oh my God. And I do appreciate you uh, admitting in your review of my book that you were a bit prejudiced when first picking it up and you actually like it. You're a fan of the ABCs of morality. Uh, yeah, overall, I don't think there's anything, um, like at least on a surface level, that's worth taking too much issue with. Though I'm, I was just curious and I wanted to see if you would elaborate on um, some of the meaning behind a few of the definitions that you gave. For sure. So, oh, overall, no. good book, but there are a few problems you have. That's where we're at. Um, to be fair, the, the problems aren't really with the book itself. I guess um, if I were to give my concern in a more succinct manner, I would say, knowing you as a, as a conservative figure, you are certainly conservative and pretty well known for that, um, I feel as though if a, left, a well-known leftist figure wrote a book for kids and the main idea behind it was to teach kids um, like values of some kind, right? Most likely left-wing values. Um, I'm curious, would this not perhaps make you a little bit suspicious? It would depend what the book actually said. And that's what kind of surprised me at first is, and why I quite frankly accepted this debate, is I couldn't believe you would challenge me to debate a book you had never read before. It was just, you know, there's kind of this degree of internet brain rot people get where they just assume this person is on righty Twitter or this person is on left wing Twitter. Therefore, anything they produce must be completely evil, irredeemable. And I know I'm going to be able to debate them on it because I'm going to disagree with everything they say. And that's just not how the world works. And I have no doubt that there could be a left wing YouTuber or a creator that could write a children's book in which I would agree with everything in it. I would never, you know, straight up assume every single bit of it is going to be Awful. Now, I have seen 
left-wing kids books that I've read and I read it and I disagree with the points and I think ah, I don't really think that's quite for children but that's after I've actually opened it up and read it and I don't think the author is as relevant to children's books as people like to think you know are we going to get rid of um say the jungle book because a lot of people consider kipling to be racist or say horton hears a who which has become an explicitly kind of anti-racist message despite the fact that now people consider dr seuss to be bigoted so i just um no, even if you don't like me and you don't think I'm a good person or whatever your opinion of me is, which I probably disagree with, I, I don't think the author is as relevant as you may try to portray. But I also think you've kind of worked yourself into a corner here where you have, you've told people you're going to debate me on the book, but you don't actually disagree with the book that much. So I, I genuinely feel there's going to be a lot of reaches here. But correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I guess we'll see. I'm actually curious. Uh oh, no. Uh, so the problem is, is that a lot of the things that people say that are like dumb people or bad people, the advice itself isn't actually bad advice. It's actually usually really good advice. The problem is that they don't actually follow it. So for instance, like when somebody says, do your own research, that's actually good advice. The problem is that the people that say do your own research never do their own research. They just go by conspiracy theories. Or when somebody says, like, I know that, like, in her book, G is for groupthink, and she's against groupthink, that's actually true. You should be against, like, groupthink. You should try to, like, arrive at decisions or answers yourself. Like, that's important to do. But conservatives do massive groupthink, right? Oh, this debate is going to be really tricky for Xander. This is going to be a, whew, this is going to be one. Good luck. Um, because you brought up the idea that the author of a book doesn't really matter, um, especially if it's a children's book where the beliefs of that author aren't necessarily um, apparent on surface level. Um, are you familiar with a phrase, uh, the death of the author? Uh, yes. Yeah, so I, I- What context are you using it with this? Yeah. I guess the idea is that if you have a piece of media and there's no apparent bias or message put in by the author that indicates the author's beliefs, yet you know the author believes these things, and this is a piece of media or art, a book, a movie, anything like that, the idea is that you try to separate the art itself from the artist. Now, if I were to do that with this book, there's, I don't really have all that big an issue with it, like really, um, but what I'm more concerned about is your what you mean when you say certain things in the book, because I know that like you're probably not going to put in everything that you, that you agree with in the book or like it's not meant to be super overtly political. So I'm more interested in discussing your motivations behind the definitions for the words that you put in there. And that's what we could discuss. Sure, let's do that. And uh, where would you like to start? What are the words that you have the most issue with, let's say? Okay, yeah, I don't um, I don't want to go over every single one, obviously, because I don't take issue with it's most of them. <laughs> um, but I guess we can start on E. There's like 26 of them, huh? Okay, do you mind if I read it off? <laughs> this, I'm sorry, this image, this is like the, I'm not any, nothing bad about Xander Hall or whatever, I'd probably do this anyway, but the idea of like, we're going to have a super serious debate as I flip through the pages on my four kids book is very funny. <laughs> for, uh... Yeah, go ahead. All right. E is for equal opportunity. Everyone is equal when they're judged on the same scale, praised if they're successful and accepting if they fail. Everyone, both boy and girl, of every race and class, should live by the same standards that they should strive to surpass. Don't try for special treatment for your friends or for your enemies. If you lose a game that's fair, you can learn from the memories of what you might have done wrong and what you can do right, which is always better than a rigged and unfair fight. So, pretty, yeah. pretty, good, uh, pretty good rhymes there. I like it. Um, Thank you. I heard you said I dropped some bars. I appreciate that. Big compliment. Yeah, we got some, we got some fire <laughs> bars in here. So... Um, I'm curious because obviously there's a lot of discuss discussion about equality and rigged or fair fights in the political scene. I'm curious if this wasn't uh, perhaps a slight reference to the idea of like um, systemic racism, for example. Uh, what, what was your thought process behind making that particular rhyme? Actually, the uh, the ABCs of of equality, which was the kind of left-wing edition of this book that I wrote this to be a more neutral version of, put just equality 
for theirs, and they defined it in more of the left-leaning terms of, you know, equality is when you kind of even the scales and everything, which of course, I, I don't really agree with the idea that, for example, uh, you should boost certain people's grades to get into universities dependent on their race. I disagree with that. I think we should be judged on the same scale as people. I think that um, that creates true equality. I shouldn't be given special treatment if I'm a woman. A man shouldn't be given special treatment if he's a man. I'm pretty sure that's what we call patriarchy, if it's only men being hired because they're men. So I do think this, once again, is something that can lean both left and right. No one. If they're white, they shouldn't be given special treatment. If they're black, they shouldn't be given special treatment. I'd like to think that's not something we disagree on. Um, no, principally, of course not. I'm curious, though, because obviously a lot of very left-leaning people would bring up something like um, white privilege. What are, your, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, no. I think that it is used as something that's far too broad and across the board to tell people's stories for them. And it's really dehumanizing in a lot of ways for people whose lives are not privileged and yet they have, you know, white skin. I, I'm not I'm not for the idea of white privilege. I think that's that's pretty evident. I think it's relevant to consider historical historically relevant systems that exist. So for example, if you're in a European country, yes, it is more likely that people who are white are going to be the royalty. It is more likely that they are going to be established and wealthy because they've been there longer. They are the ones who established a country. We can talk about that, but there's also peasants. There are also people who are oppressed. There are also, you know, even in the forming of America, I won't compare it directly to slavery, but it's not like the Irish or Italians were thought of particularly highly. So I think that we, we shouldn't use these terms that really work people into boxes and deny their personal life experience and history. My personal history, my grandmother was a war or orphan who was sent to uh, orphanages and homes in Australia and had to escape because she was horribly abused and got on a boat at 16 to Canada where she grew up homeless and dumpster diving. You know, I don't think she, I think it would be horrible to say she had a privileged life just because of her skin color. So I really reject the notion that we can just assume everyone has white, everyone who has white skin has some sort of privilege. But I do think it's relevant to say in some areas, people who have white skin may be more likely to have privilege or wealth. Do you mind if- Oh! I'm sorry, did you think I was talking to you? What? Do you know what I found in my pocket in this sweatshirt? From the last wait, time? Wait, wait, wait. It's right here. Oh my god! It, it was actually not in your Oh my it was god! Right you took it out. Oh, oh it's not in here god. at all. Oh it's my right god! Here. You got it. Good job. Nice. Good job. You found it. Thank you. Like, comment, write some dumb shit below. Um. Okay. Lauren Southern's explanation of privilege here is actually 100% correct. Um. Fuck. Uh. Xander Hall needs to be careful here. Okay. White privilege, now, a lot of lefties seem to have trouble with this, okay? Or people have trouble with this. White privilege does not mean that every single white person is ahead of every single non-white person. It just means that there might be some set of unearned advantages by virtue of being white versus any other race. Now, there might be a poor white person whose life is fucked, but if they were a poor black person, their life might be even more fucked. Technically, this is correct, right? Um, so you can find common ground here on the definitions and then say like, yeah, okay, so we agree. So don't you think it might be important sometimes to address that? Which Lauren Southern is kind of conceding. She's saying like, well, man, it might be important to address like, you know, that some people might come from wealthy backgrounds and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, okay, well, if that's the case, don't you think that maybe the group thing thing is a bit reductive? Although in a kid's book, I don't know if you're going to be having complicated discussions about like the differences in people's like backgrounds, um, but be careful. Mel? Yeah? Why do you keep leaving this door open? But then turn the air off. We don't have the AC. We're not paying to heat the whole fucking neighborhood, Mel. Our neighbors aren't contributing to my electric bill. If I elaborate on the definition of white privilege, at least as I understand it, and as most of the academic well, community is, seems to. I understand to. there are different, yeah, I understand there are different definitions of white privilege, but I'm talking about it in the way that it is popularly used within pop culture, within discussion, within even my own classrooms when I was growing up. But feel free to go ahead. Yeah, so when... At least I talk about white privilege, and when most academics talk about white privilege, they're usually referring to um, the remnants or even still existing systems that seem to specifically target the, ma the vast majority of people of color, typically, but not white people. So, for example... Okay, something that's also really important, guys... Um... 
<sighs> okay. I don't know who else had a grade school education like this. Everything you learn about plagiarizing in grade school is completely and totally wrong, okay? The idea that good research is when you take a sentence, copy paste it, but then you rephrase the sentence and now it's not plagiarism is not true. In fact, I'm pretty sure in college you can still get, do you can still get docked for plagiarizing, not docked, but like academic fucking whatever, like for plagiarizing, if you just copy sentences and paraphrase them, that still counts as plagiarizing because you're not actually integrating the information, synthesizing it with what you know, and then creating something unique, right? You're just rephrasing something. It's very, very, very important that when you talk about ideas like this, you've internalized them and you can speak about them and you can speak about them in different types of ways. So like Xander Hall, I'm being very, very, very picky right now. So most of you guys would fuck this up too, okay? So I don't think I'm being, I'm being un, un, I'm being very, very, very picky for Xander Hall. But Xander Hall, like listening to her definition and then launching into his own definition here, I feel like he should have at least like acknowledged some common ground here because everything he's about to explain more or less can apply to Lawrence Simmons as well. It makes me wonder sometimes if we've just memorized and we're rehearsing like a definition rather than we've actually synthesized the information and now we're going to like integrate it into a conversation or something. Um, you could, here's, here's a good example, right? You can be a poor white person and have it really, really rough, right? And you could have a rich black person who, economically speaking, has it very, very well. There are still certain things that that white person has, very small privileges that white person has over that rich black person. Is it life-changing? Is it uh, a revolutionary for their overall well-being? Probably not, but it is still worth talking about because when we get down to it, these are the types of biases and the types of privileges we probably don't want to exist in society, right? Sure. Yeah, she yeah, won't so, disagree with any of okay. that. Yeah, typ typically I'm referring to things like the like injustice in the, in the racial justice system, the racism there. Um, we agree on that, right? You agree about like the racism in the, uh, the uh, criminal justice system? Uh-oh. You'd have to point out direct examples. I think there, you know, people would argue that it could go either way in some cases, but you'd have to historically, most likely we'd agree, modern times, I don't know. We could also talk about, once again, the racism in college admissions. We could talk about the racism in affirmative action hiring and how people who are more qualified for roles uh, don't get them because of their skin color or because- Okay, potentially controversial take, especially in the wake of the Asian hate crimes in the United States, okay? Now listen, I love Asian people, okay? All Asian people, Asian men even, okay? Who are hated on the internet, I guess, or I think they are, um, okay? When you complain about re reverse discrimination as Asians, you guys cannot compare, compare that to the discrimination against black people, okay? When, when your life experience is like, all of us are so wealthy and do so well in school and have such great families and shit that it's harder for us to get into college because our scores. This is just like black people being discriminated. Nah, this ain't it, chief, okay? Now, can we argue that there are some forms of discrimination that exist against um, Asian people in some of the selective practices that some colleges exercise like on the margins or whatever? Sure. But don't, that's not the same as other types of discrimination, okay? Like, when your whole class is doing, like, so, 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 so well that, like, you're disproportionately overrepresented at every single Ivy League institution in the United States. Now, again, is there an argument that it might be good, might be bad? Sure, we can have those discussions. But you can't say it's the same type of discrimination that, like, black people or Hispanics face. That's a different, that's a different type of thing. Um, but, yeah. Because of their gender. And you would say that that's an equaling out of things, but um, well, I disagree with you there. I actually would disagree because I think, from my understanding, I believe those that benefit most from affirmative action are actually white women, like more well-off white women. Oh, from my I understanding, I don't disagree. I don't disagree with that, and I think it's ridiculous. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that affirmative action <laughs> on its own is exactly the best way to go about amending these particular problems. So when right. I talk about, okay, and I, and I agree with you. That's what this is saying. I don't think that's a good thing. I don't think it's a good thing to boost people just because of their skin color or their race, because it actually takes away from the achievements of very successful minorities, very successful women that have worked hard for these positions. And everyone looks at them and questions, did you get this because you were an affirmative action hire? Or did you get this because you're an incredibly talented individual? So I don't think it's been positive for anyone in any way. And even you're saying yourself, you know, actually this has just benefited certain classes and groups and uh, it's not necessarily been positive at correcting the overall problem. Yeah, so when I talk about affirm, like, 
uh, privilege or um, systems that are racist. I'm not necessarily referring to like affirmative action. I'm referring to things that are a lot easier to pinpoint and there's a lot more data behind and that are way more impactful in most people's lives than just whether or not this person gets hired for this job because they're white or black or this person gets accepted to this university because they're white or black. I'm referring more to like the overrepresentation of incarceration in the in prisons when it comes to black people and white people, the overall um, uh, socioeconomic position of black people in this country, and just generally non-white people uh, as well. Um, I'm talking about issues like this. Obviously, the leftover hey, well, well, can ramifications. I, can I just quickly tell you something? Sure. I'm not addressing any of that in this book. It's a children's book. I am certainly yeah. not trying to make any sort of hidden mention of, you know, uh, the incarceration rates. I'm not talking about that at all. This is literally just saying we should treat people equally regardless of their gender or skin color and judge them on the same scale. That's it. There's no hidden message here talking about all of these extensive subjects you've brought up here. And I, even if I wanted to, there couldn't be. It's a children's book. It's an extremely simplified concept. So I really think you're using this point that you don't really disagree with to go off on tons of other topics that you maybe want to discuss with me and we can save for later when we're done the book. But this has nothing to do with all of these topics you brought up, that equal opportunity bit. Well, I apologize if, if it seems that way, but my, my main point is that you can't completely separate the beliefs of the author from, from the art. So when I read this, my interpretation... Oh, that's going to be a big no from me, fam. I have not heard very often people take the other side of the death of the author to say, well, the author is not dead. They're actually inseparable from their work. Well, I guess some people have. Nation was, okay, so we're talking about equality and how people should strive to surpass and, and you know, winning a, a, a rigged fight isn't really, isn't really something that's worth any merit. And so I, I couldn't help but think of like, because I watched a lot of your content back in the day of when you would talk about like how um, the left overblows uh, the problems with like the racial or the racial inequalities in the in the criminal justice system. It, it just brought me back to that. I, it had nothing to do with that. And OK, there's you, you guys can look it up. There's this book called Postmodern Pooh, and it's a book which tries to argue in jest that Winnie the Pooh is actually just rife with post-colonial theory. And it's actually a books about satanic ritual abuse using Piglet and other things. And it's quite a funny book for adults to read. And it, it mocks the idea of like over reading into this and how you could literally interpret these kids' books to be the craziest ideas you can come up with. And I think you're starting to ver like just go into that territory. Like with Attack on Titan. <laughs> a little bit where you are taking this book and somehow making a poem about, hey, we should treat all genders and races equally, about the disparity in incarceration rates in America. Like you, you just, I can tell you right now, that wasn't even in the peripheral of my mind when I was writing this. And I do think this brings it back to the point I was making, which is, I feel you've worked yourself into a corner where you don't actually disagree with this book. You don't disagree with me on the content. So you are trying to deliberately create disagreement that isn't there. Okay. Um, yeah, if you didn't have any, like, political, uh, if there were no references or bias politically to this and it was just like, hey, we should treat everyone equally, then I have no issue with that. Um, okay. Do you want to move on to the, uh, I, I guess it's the next two. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, put the F is for femi femininity and M is for masculinity one together. Um, because I feel yeah. like they reference, I, I'm actually, this is going to be a genuine question because I'm curious if your opinion on this has changed. Um, so I don't need to read off the whole thing, but uh, you say at the end of the one for femininity, if you want to be a tomboy, that's okay. Some girls aren't feminine. And then at the end of the masculinity one, you say if you're a boy and you don't want to be masculine, that's all right. So I'm curious if, um, because I was actually really surprised to read that. Are you... Um, have you sort of like become more uh, supportive of like trans and gender nonconforming people in the last, <laughs> oh my at God. least since last time I heard you talk about uh, that particular topic? What does this book have to do with trans people? They're not mentioned at all in it. <laughs> well, you specifically said that not all women have to be uh, feminine, not all men have to be masculine. And I assume, I mean, gender nonconforming means you don't conform to traditional gender roles. That's what that's referencing, right? 
You know there are guys who are completely straight that act in feminine ways, or there are guys that are completely cis, so to speak, that aren't entirely masculine, and there are women that are completely cis and not transgender individuals that uh, act like tomboys. I was a tomboy when growing up. Being a tom, are you under the impression that being a tomboy makes you transgender? No, absolutely not. But this is obviously well, then how encompassed. Did you read that from this? So, are you only referring to cisgendered people that are like straight? Okay. To be fair, okay, we're gonna be fair to Xander Hall. This is a really hard debate, okay? Because he chose a really bad topic. He should not have... This was a mistake, okay? For somebody to write a totally non... This is kind of like... It reminds me where... And I wish I could... I wish I could say I expect more from you guys, but you guys do it too. This... this, this let me give you the microcosm of what this debate is. I open a Jordan Peterson video, okay? And Jordan Peterson starts talking. He's like, oh, well, you know, I think that when people have trauma, I think it's really important that they, you know, find ways to address this in their lives. And, you know, I don't think that it's just as, uh, you know, it's not just as simple as, say, like, just taking a pill and expecting all of it to go away, right? Jordan Peterson will say something like that, and everyone in chat will be like, oh, my God, Jordan Peterson, horrible person. And it's like, well, no, I mean, he's right, right? Like, it's like, that's correct. Like, you, even if you are in therapy, you can't just get prescribed a drug and it fixes your depression. It doesn't work that way, right? It's actually it's way more complicated than that. And then everybody were like, oh, yeah, true, right, right. Where people are, like, so fucking eager to shit on somebody because they disagree with their politics. And a lot of what they say is generally that horror. Peterson has a lot of dog shit fucking takes, especially political takes. But, like, that doesn't mean that we have to agree with every single fucking thing a person says and demonize every single fucking thing a person writes about. Don't do that. Don't fall into that trap. It's really dumb, okay? It's really dumb. Don't do that. You do this. You! Hey! You do this sometimes. Stop doing it. Stop doing it, okay? My food takes her right. I'm sorry. All right. And just I, happen to not right really now, fall in. I am not bringing up the subject of transgenderism in a children's book. I'm completely against the idea of bringing transgender ideology onto children who are barely even starting to consider the fact of their own what is you know, being a female and a male. It, I, I don't believe in bringing transgender ideology onto children at all. So wait, no, what, this has nothing wait, to do with that. Are, are, why are you okay with putting cisgender ideology into that? I mean, in the very same passage, you talk about how- Oh no, God. oh no, dude, not good. Uh, what, is, isn't Lauren Southern, she's, isn't she like 30 now? She's done, she's done the rounds of this, okay? Hopefully, I would hope. I don't think she's gonna get tripped up in like, so, oh, she's 25. I don't think she's gonna get tripped up. Well, okay, never mind. she's 25, fuck her. She might get tripped up in this. You under 30 years, okay, you guys don't know what it's like out here in the hardcore world of debates. Football and, and, and bravery and whatnot is masculine. Mothers and princesses are that's, feminine. That's what masculine means. Teaching them words, femininity and masculinity, well, you can, that's what these words mean. Well, that's true. Femininity and masculinity has nothing to do with cis or trans. Trans people can be feminine or masculine. Cis people can be feminine or masculine. Non-binary people can have feminine or masculine. It has nothing to do with cis or trans. You just said you don't want the, the transgender ideology being taught uh, to them, but this no. is, I guess you could say the cisgender because ideology. transgender ideology is a highly politicized subject that when put on kids can lead them to make all sorts of life-changing decisions, which they are not old enough to make yet. Ones which can change their biology, make them infertile, lead to mass amounts of confusion. And quite okay. frankly, in my opinion, I have a lot of love for people who are struggling with gender identity issues, I do. I have friends that are transgender. I have friends that have detransitioned. And it is not something that is fun. It is not fun thinking that you are, or being in the wrong body, however you want to portray it. It's not some joyous thing that you just say, yeah, choose that. No, in a lot of ways, we should teach people to be comfortable in their own body and to embrace and love it. And if later on it turns out they are having issues with gender identity, that is not something you try to promote. It is an issue. It is a struggle to be born in the wrong body or have, you know, body dysmorphia. That's not like, I don't, I don't. A really good rhetorical tactic here is when you, if you can find a way to integrate your adversaries complaints into your solution is an incredibly effective rhetorical technique. So let's say that we were arguing in favor of gay conversion therapy, right? Which 
to my understanding, there's zero empirical evidence that you can convert somebody away from being gay. That's my understanding of that, right? Instead of coming out and saying that like, gay people are evil, fuck gay people, let's just make them all straight. Instead of doing that, if you can take over, if you can commandeer the, the language and the vocabulary of your adversary and be like, gay people have it really hard in life. They have a lot of struggles. There's a lot of problems with the way that we treat gay people in America. It's super fucked up. All of the uh, uphill battles and everything that they face in different aspects of life. That's why I advocate for like gay conversion therapy so that they don't have to deal with things like this. Like I'm super, I have a lot of gay friends, right? When you, you, when you commandeer their language and you take over it and then you use it to push your own agenda, it's very effective. I don't agree with any, almost anything Lauren Southern has said here. She's like getting away with a lot of dumb shit, but she's couching it in such a way that she sounds empathetic towards trans people. Um, and it's incredibly effective, I think, at, at getting that point across. I understand this idea that we should teach people to be happy with choosing to be transgender as if it's some choice. I choose to have body dysmorphia. Like it's a really big struggle, which has high suicide rates, high rates of depression, um, you know, even depression after surgery. It's, it's, it's to Wait, hold on real quick. Whether or not someone is capable of graduating is one of the key indicators the admissions office looks at when they decide who to admit. So I, I think I have this now in my in my positions on my website. I wrote a little bit about like the affirmative action stuff. Um, the affirmative action stuff, God damn it. I just crashed my computer with whatever dumb shit I just clicked on. Um, the affirmative action stuff has to be done very carefully because apparently that phenomenon is very real where people get affirmative action into schools and then they start to drop out at very high rates because they just they shouldn't have gone to that school and it can be incredibly demotivating for the people that end up qualifying in um, and those those selections need to uh, take place in a much more careful way. What the fuck is happening? What did I do? I tried to print? Is it looking for a printer? Oh Shit, did it find one? I think it's called the mismatch problem. Uh, I'm just going to read this from my site. Affirmative action tends to run into trouble in universities where huge mismatch problems occur. Minority students who are given too much preferential treatment and admissions will massively underperform their peers, causing them to drop out at disproportionately higher rates. Though some argue in favor of aggressive affirmative action for higher education, they often only look at the enrollment rates as indicators of success rather than the actual college achievement. I think in one of these that I link, there were some colleges where they looked at it and they said, oh, look, we did affirmative action and the enrollment rates doubled. Or no, no, rather, I think in, it might have been, was it in California? They got rid of affirmative action and the admission rates dropped, they were cut in half. And everybody pointed to that and they're like, look, this is horrible. We got rid of affirmative action and the rates got cut in half. But when you looked at the absolute number of people graduating, it actually was the exact same. If that's the case, then technically, whatever chaff got cut there in the affirmative action removal that was actually beneficial because now you basically didn't enroll a bunch of people where there was a huge mismatch problem that wouldn't have graduated anyways yeah oh and then this is a very interesting read um i think this guy looks at this guy finds the students that graduated from it was like the first college i think was it columbia university that the first like um admissions for affirmative action it follows a lot of the stories of those students it's just an interesting read on it um, for how people felt about it in their lives and stories at the time. But um, yeah, but yeah, hurting enrollment isn't necessarily bad if your graduation rates are remaining the same, right? If you have 10 black people join your school and six graduate, and then you do affirmative action and 20 black people join your school and six graduate, that's a big mismatch problem, not good. Um, be careful with that. Yeah, sorry, okay. Um, to some degrees, and this is a debate I understand in the left-wing community, whether it's a mental illness or not, and how this debate affects whether insurance claims will fund- Ah, uh, no. Oh, God, she's- oh. Don't- Hey, listen. I'm sorry. I'm going to come off as incredibly dickish saying this. If you don't know a lot about trans issues, do not talk about them or debate them. I'm sorry to say this, but especially if you're trans, okay? If you don't know, like, the ins and outs of all of these arguments, just leave it alone. Just say, like, hey, listen, you know what? I don't want to talk about trans shit. It's too complicated. Just back the fuck away from it, Okay. As human beings, we are capable of experiencing and feeling a lot of stuff that we don't understand. Just because you have a lived experience, just because you endure something or go through something, does not mean that you understand it, okay? There are a lot of fucking people that flunk out of basic fucking algebra in college, but they can walk in one direction, turn their head in another direction, and then track a moving object with their eyeballs in like a third, you're moving through like seven different fucking dimensions of movement, perfectly smoothly following anything, and you can't even do like, like single variable fucking algebra, okay? Like, just because you can, you're capable of doing something or experiencing something with your body, does not mean that you're capable of explaining it, or more importantly, understanding it in order to explain it to other people, all right? Just, yeah. <clears throat>
on people's surgeries or not. But there is a debate as to whether this is a mental illness. There is a debate to the psychological impacts this has on people. This book is about basic concepts of life. And female and male, these two genders, are literally how humanity has existed from the dawn of time. You can't reproduce without them both. And the idea of femininity and masculinity are two concepts which have existed uh, for a very long time throughout history. And the only reason I'm bringing them up is, quite frankly, because society has demonized them in a lot of ways. And I'm trying to tell kids, actually, it's okay to be feminine and masculine. All right. Okay, we got a lot to go over there because you brought a lot of things up, and I do want to acknowledge all of it. So firstly, I understand that the issue of trans people is very, very like politicized, right? There's a huge political debate about yes. it. My opinions in this I'm not issue... I'm it up in a kid. <laughs> okay, sure. My opinions about transgender people are entirely backed by science, okay? I have done <laughs> oh, tons no. of research into this. If you want any of my sources or anything like that, I can provide them to you very happily in an instant, okay? Um, the only way that you can start to make those appeals is once you've reached the bottom. So let's say, for instance, somebody... So here's two ways a conversation can go. <clears throat> I think that rent control is bad. Well, I think that rent control is good. Oh, well, I think it's bad because I think that it doesn't improve the housing stock in an area. I think it discourages reinvestment in rent control units. And I think it discourages other people from coming into the city. Oh, well, I disagree because of these things, blah, 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 blah. And then you argue. And then maybe at the very end, you come to some rock bottom. And you're like, well, I don't think it does this. And I think it does this. It's like, okay, well, you know what? Here are my sources that say this. Like, unless you got something different, like, I'm sorry, chief. Like, I'm, we're done here, right? Here's a way to not do this discussion. <clears throat> hey, I think that rent control is good. Oh, well, I think that rent control is bad. And all of the sources agree with me. Oh. I guess there's not much to talk about then, huh? You can't you can't open with that. The appealing to like the sources or the science or whatever, that has that's like at the end of the discussion, or that's when you've reached some rock bottom point where there's no more conversation to be had. So first of all, there are no kids that are being brainwashed into being transgender and engaging in some uh, total body changing, biologically irreversible thing that's happening to them. That's false. That's false. I'm watching this is it true. right now within my own community in well, Canada. We've can you got give family me an example? friends that are dealing with this. We've got family friends that are dealing with this in Canada with their daughter who are, is 14 years old, who is currently trying to transition and go on hormones. And they told her, we love you. We support you, but we just want to wait until you're at an age, 18, you know, the age you're allowed to drink, vote, all of these huge decisions, get tattoos. Just wait till then, because this is something that can affect your fertility. This is something that can affect your bone mass. This is something that can- Okay, first of all, I'm sorry, but if you wanted to maintain your bone mass and not affect your bone density, you shouldn't have been a woman, chief, because menopause and periods will fuck over your bones, okay? They just do, all right? Number one. Number two, okay? Because the, um, because the, 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 the framing of our conversations has moved so far, like, progressive, in a good way, over the past few years, it is so, 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 so easy to just use gay people as an example, because even conservatives aren't going to sit here and say, like, well, gay people aren't real, right? It would be so easy to say, well, what do you think about a 14-year-old that says that they're gay, and their parents say, you're not allowed to be gay, you need to be 18 to make that decision? Would you say that a 14-year-old doesn't know if they're gay or not, right? Like, I think that that would have been, I, I don't I don't know if Xander Hall is going to make that appeal, but I think that appeal is a very easy, like, middle ground. It's like, well, maybe children, you know, do know some things, right? Um... And then also, because because these conservatives love to appeal to certain types of scientific evidence so often, one thing that conservatives love to do is they like to say, men and women are fundamentally different. In fact, we even know that at an early age, boys prefer certain types of toys over girls, even as early as two to three months in age. And that's actually true. This is actually psychological like research that supports us. Jordan Peterson cites this stuff all the time. It's like, oh, okay, cool. Well, if men and women start to differentiate in the womb, arguably, right, but the behavior is apparent, even a couple months of their birth how can you say they have no familiarity with what their gender is or what they think their gender ought to be right like these are like really basic like rhetorical appeals that you can use not to win a debate but just to kind of like move the discussion forward rather than just saying that like science agrees with me right and really affect your health i have friends that have detransitioned that still can't afford the surgeries for their detransitioning and it's totally ruined their mental health so at least damn Oh, uh, wait, can't afford the surgeries for their detransition. Isn't isn't sex reassignment surgery? That's like some that's like some very, very rare stuff, isn't it? I, fuck, this is a stat that I don't know, but I would be comfortable arguing this without knowing the stat. I'm pretty sure very few trans people actually go through with the full SRS, the full sex reassignment surgery. Um, there might be 
um, man, there might be trans women that do the top surgery, maybe. Um, but like even that is probably, but actually, well, maybe if you've got trans men that get like mastectomies, right? Is it a mastectomy is when you remove the breast tissue? But um, man, that's th I think this is pretty. This is pretty rare. Like these these surgeries are very expensive. Um, if you're a trans woman, boob removal is also expensive. Um, if you're a trans woman, you get fake boobs. I'm pretty sure taking out fake boobs is pretty easy. Like they just they reopen the incision and they take the boobs out. I mean, it's a I, is this outpatient surgery? I don't know. Like if it's super duper simple, I'm pretty sure it's like fairly simple. Like getting them. But like um, also keep in mind, okay, two very 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 important terms, okay. Um, SRS, okay, sex reassignment surgery involves scalpels and operations and shit, okay? Um, HRT, hormone replacement therapy, is not any type of surgical stuff, okay? Um, I, I seriously doubt, I would be shocked, I would be fucking shocked if Lauren Southern knew more than one person that's actually had sex reassignment surgery. I don't think I know a single person that's actually had any, any, um... I guess Lumi had their public, right? Or whatever their name is. I don't know what the fuck they call themselves now. I'm pretty sure they had like a top surgery, but that's, it's really, really, really rare. That's a, that's a pretty rare thing. Um, it's just like, I, I, I think it, actually wait, hold on. Well, before we say that, let's, can we find, okay. Percentage of trans people SRS. I wonder what the actual percentage is. I'm going by the first Vox link I say. This is higher than I thought it would be. 33% um, said that they had surgically transitioned. I'm guessing that it probably includes top surgery too. This is according to the 2011 National Transgender Discrimination Survey. Still only one third of all trans people, which are already a really small subset. More than I thought though, but I wonder how hard it is to undo top surgery. I guess it would depend on which direction you're going, huh? Also, I'm pretty sure people that detransition, I'm pretty sure that number is really, really rare as well. You can't undo a mastectomy. It's mastectomy, right? Is it mastectomy or mastectomy? Fuck, no, I don't remember. It's mastectomy. Um, I, I, somebody in chat pointed out that it's not the same surgery, um, that you don't get a mastectomy if you're um, female to male. I, I, I don't know what the actual surgery is for, top surgery for people, but all right. At least wait until you're at a certain age, they said. Canadian social services have come in and said, no, we will take your child away if you do not allow them to get this treatment. And this is something that's also just been documented. I've got a video on my channel about it, uh, a more public case in the same province, British Columbia mm -hmm. in Canada, where a man's child is transitioning and going through hormone treatment underage. All right, hold on. The states are not allowing him to oppose it. I have a question. If you have a child who has manic depression and the doctors recommend that they get on uh, antidepressants and the parents say, no, I don't want any of this for my kid, at least not until they're old enough. Do you think it would be valid for the government to say, hey, if you're not going to give your kid what they need to deal with their with their mental health, then we're going to have to take them away from you because they're a danger, you're being See, a danger I, to them. I hate when people compare depression, cancer, all these other things to trans Well, it's absolutely comparable As because we can- Let her finish, let her finish. Why does she hate it? Let her hang herself with her own words. Don't cut her off. Why is it not comparable? With all As data- if someone chooses to identify as depressed or detransitions from being depressed later. Well, no there one chooses no to have gender dysphoria. Wait, 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 but no, 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 but people are detransitioning. That's the point. Very few. I don't think few. choose to have gender, no, that's not Very true. Very few. I don't think people choose to have depression or gender dysphoria, but no one is detransitioning from having cancer. No one is detransitioning from having depression. Cancer is a really bad comparison. Depression is different. There are people I, you don't detransition from having depression, but there are, wait, the depression thing is actually a really good comparison because um, there are people that stop taking antidepressive medications for a variety of reasons. There are people that take antidepressive medications. Are they called antipsychotics? Is an SSRI an antipsychotic? I don't think it counts as an antipsychotic, does it? Um, there are people that stop taking these medications um, because uh, because they like feel suicidal or because or these medications like literally cause them to kill themselves. Um, they absolutely do with... Um, Um, they absolutely do with these types of medications. Your point is that people don't get over depression and then feel regret and want to be depressed again. 
Yeah, but I don't know how many, I guess this would be an appeal to the data. How many people get over feeling trans and regret transitioning? This is a data point that would have to be appealed to. I think somebody in chat said it earlier, the numbers that I've seen, it's like one to 5% of people that transition end up regretting it whatever. That's a very, very, very low number. That's my understanding of it. If it's higher than, um, that this would, this would be a data point to argue about. Simply the fact of people detransitioning means we have to be very careful and very serious about who we allow to take these treatments. And children who, quite frankly, have very, they, they do not have established ideas about who they are and what they want. One out of five seems very high. One to five percent? Five percent is not one out of five. Not in life yet. I, I think about tattoos I wanted even when I was 17, 18 that I look back at and I'm like, oh my gosh. Or even I think of uh, I, identities I had as a young child thinking that, you know, play, we're, we're a dog. My sister and I used to dress up as boys and go to the skate park and have fun pretending All right, to be hold, boys then. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on for a second, okay? Us, hold on, you're, I feel like, I, I feel like we're moving off from, from just oh, let me okay. finish what I was about to say, okay? So in the overwhelming amount of data, it has been shown that if a trans person is allowed to transition and they have gender dysphoria and they have the support of at least one family member, their likelihood of attempting or committing suicide drops significantly. It is very similar to depression. You also said nobody chooses to detransition from cancer. Tons of people have regret whenever they go through uh, treatment for cancer. Getting chemotherapy and rape- No! Why wouldn't you focus on the other thing? Why wouldn't you focus on depression? No, why would you go down the cancer route? Oh no, you took- that, that wasn't even like a choice. You didn't even have the option to fuck that up. Why would you do this? <laughs> oh no! Oh, you picked the wrong one! Radiation is miserable. A lot of people get bullied into it by their families because their families don't want to see them gone. I'd say there's probably a higher amount of people who regret, per capita, who regret getting uh, treatment for cancer because of how terrible the side effects are than there are people who willingly <laughs> get like hormones to transition or go through any other surgeries they would go through and, and then end up regretting that. Oh, but clearly we need to take these processes very seriously. It is taken if seriously. You're, you're, the thing is, there has not been a wide range of research done on transitioning. There has been. Especially amongst under, so you're saying there's been a wide range of research amongst underage people. Okay, real quick. Also, this is also something else, okay? Trans issues are like, this is like some cutting edge shit. Do not ever come into these debates and pretend that we know so much about trans athletes or transitioning as a child. You don't transition as a child, actually get puberty blockers. Okay, a lot of this research is very new. There are not a lot of longitudinal, there might not be any big longitudinal studies related to like puberty blockers and kids and transition later on in life. This is all like very new stuff, okay? The, like the important part for establishing these conversations isn't to try to say like the science is on my side like blah 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 this is you're right or I'm right you're wrong fuck off the important thing is like you should ask the question should be like well you know like what are the risks or I guess like <clears throat> I, so when it comes to prescribing medication okay when doctors make decisions about things okay Usually, I, I don't think that the idea is that like, this is right and this is wrong and suck my dick, okay? I think that usually most of the stuff you do in medicine is like, okay, well, if I prescribe this thing, what are the benefits and what are the side effects? Like, that's how you look at a lot of things. And I think that we can probably apply that same mentality to looking at translated stuff as well, right? If we allow children to take puberty blockers, what are the benefits? What are the side effects, right? That's really the question. If it, ca if it comes out to being that like 1% of children that take puberty blockers ends up regretting it, well, for the 99% that are quote unquote saved, that's probably a, that's probably like a pretty good turnout, right? So that would be the question. I don't think either side would disagree on this. It would just come down to debate on the numbers. Whereas if like 85% of children that took puberty blockers later regretted it, well, hold on, this probably isn't a good treatment now. This is probably something that we need to investigate further, you know? People getting surgery and transitioning medically when it's just now being brought to the surface. We it's not just now being brought to the like surface. Ten years. We, so do, you're saying we have research over five, 10 years that shows the impacts of getting medical treatment as a child mm -hmm. when they grow up. You're saying yeah. that exists right now this, in a large world. The reason why and you don't think it has- just recently being brought forward. Yeah, I'll elaborate in a moment, but the, I wanna say this first. The reason why you don't think it has is because this issue has only become extremely politicized very recently, but nobody, 
is advocating, while nobody within any actual credibility or any power, is actually advocating for giving kids hormones. Now, you probably mix these up. A lot of people do. What's been advocated for and what has been tested and verified to be safe are hormone blockers. The point of hormone blockers is if you have a kid who has gender dysphoria or who thinks they might be trans, you have them visit a designated healthcare professional, usually their pediatrician, who will refer them to a, um, to a therapist, and that therapist will figure out whether or not it is very likely they have gender dysphoria. Now, there's a huge issue with a lot of trans people. It becomes a lot harder later in life for you to transition if you've gone through, let's say you're a trans woman. You are now in your 20s and you are now finally able to get hormones and start transitioning because you are fully at fully, you know, let go of the reins. Right. But you've gone through a male puberty. It is a lot harder for you now to go through that process to achieve the body that you want to achieve because you went through the wrong puberty. Now, puberty blockers okay. are safe to give to kids that are, you know, coming out of prepubescence into to puberty and it's been found that there are no negative side effects these same hormone blockers That's not true the bone density thing is seems to be true that you probably will have adverse impacts on bone density going forward if you do the puberty blockers sometime now that's not a that's not like a like you're fucked right it's just something to be aware of but the idea that there are no negative side effects that's you should always be cautious there's negative side effects to almost everything right like taking fucking tylenol i think or is it aspirin can be like a blood thinner you can like bleed out or die or like there's there's always potential side effects like female birth control um can, can cause you know can lead to a very very small but somewhat elevated risk of blood clots right? there's like side effects to literally everything be very 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 careful when you're like there's no side effects to this treatment like ah man i don't know man um don't, don't, when you play that card, you're setting yourself up for failure. Be careful. This have been used on kids that are not um, transgender when they have thyroid issues or other issues that require them, and they've been found to be overwhelmingly safe. I believe it was found that they are more safe than ear infection medication, which we give to all, we give kids all the time when they go swimming in the pool and they get pee in their, their ear when they're swimming around. Um, okay. I want to first, I want to concede something okay. right now. All right. You're oh actually right. There has been a decent amount of research done on people post reassignment surgery. And uh, I just had someone send it to me actually. The most thorough follow-up of sex reassigned people oh, no. research extending over 30 years and conducted in Sweden where the culture is strongly supportive of transgender individuals uh -oh. documents their lifelong mental unrest. 10 to 15 years after surgical reassignment, the suicide rate of those who had undergone sex reassignment surgery rose to 20 times that of comparable peers. Is this the, um, is this by NCBI, ncbi.nlm.nhi.gov? Um, not that I can see here, no. Can you link it to me? Yep. This is something I've heard before from other studies, but I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna send it to me on Discord? Oh no. I'm sending it to you on Twitter. Oh, okay. Remember, I'm a boomer. I don't know how Discord works. Yep, I've seen this one. So this, I've actually seen this study plenty, and it's been debunked overwhelmingly. So for starter, uh, for starters, okay, so it doesn't agree with you. So it's been debunked. No, you know what? Do you know <laughs> who was actually? Do you know who was actually pulled by this? Do you know who was actually pulled in this uh, study? Who was pulled by this? This study pulled parents, not the actual children, and those polls were taken online based on, and they, they like there was no like going to people's homes, visiting parents. It was completely online. People just. It was an online survey. It wasn't an actual, uh, like, well-conducted study. It's t it was terrible data the, collection. I'm reading the methods right now. It contains discharge diagnosis, up to seven contributory diagnostics. Uh, wait, one minute, sorry. Just, never mind. So it's got national risk. Oh, no, he's on a studies to watch out for. <laughs> Fucking Google Doc. Oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> that goddamn... The two most prolific researchers of our time, NCBIH or whatever, what is it? National Bureau of Institute of Health or whatever? National Center, no, it's National, Cen National Center for Biotechnology Information. Fuck these abbreviations. Um, and et al, okay? Those are the two most prolific researchers of our time. Watch out for them, all right? Destiny, Mouthy Buddha, what? Zeno responded by giving the critique of the ROG study, which it seemed about transitioning ostensibly because it was right below the critique of the Swedish study on Vosch's doc. Oh, whoops. registers
Did they just take this back? That particular study has become a laughing stock among much of the um, scientific community. <laughs> okay, what? Why do you? He uses very aggressive language for what sounds like a fairly chilled out conversation. Now. I might just end up being wrong on this because people people are just so stupid, you guys included. You can't tell the difference, okay? And apparently people think that if you shout at one person, you shout at everybody because people accuse me of this. Um, in my perfect world, I think you should match the person's energy, okay? If somebody wants to get into a screaming match with me, I'll do it. I love that. It's fun for me. But if somebody's trying to have like a chilled out conversation, I'll have a chilled out conversation. That's fine. Not everything has to be like a fucking screaming match. I think it's really important to match the other person's energy. So like with Demon Mama, right? Because the thing is, is like, I'll have a polite conversation with somebody like, oh, you're rude to everybody. I'm like, what do you mean? It's like, well, look like at Demon Mama. What, what, what? You were rude. It's like, well, yeah, of course I'm matching her energy because she's a fucking piece of shit. I'm going to be a piece of shit back, right? Uh, but I think that like if the other person is being relatively chill, I think you have to match that energy because if you come over the top, I think you end up looking like a debate bro or you end up looking like really aggressive for no reason whatsoever. I've seen it a million times. <laughs> like, why would you say that? Oh God. I'm not gonna take your word at it because you were just telling me that you have a bunch of studies that show people's suicide rates drop. You can go pick those up mm -hmm. while I'm reading the how this was done. Absolutely. Let me pull out the Google Doc. Here we go. I'm not seeing anything in here about being an online study. If anything, it's suggesting that they were interviewing people. Uh-oh. And, um... It was a survey that was taken online. Uh-oh. And, and it was also extremely biased. I didn't want to bring this one up because I don't know how much you would agree. But the, the survey, I believe, was hosted on a very well-known, like, anti-trans website as well. Oh, no. Um, and there was no strong verification to determine whether or not the people taking the surveys were... Um, were like real, and it was also meant to survey parents, not the actual trans people. I just sent you one of many studies that um, validate that, uh, oh, here's a good one here. I can send this one as well. Uh -oh. um, most notably, strong parental support decreases the likelihood of a suicide attempt within the last, uh, in the past year from 57% to just 4%. That is a massive decrease massive. in the likelihood of suicide for an individual who is transgender, who, um, uh, uh, who has family support. The data seems to overwhelmingly suggest that support from a family member now, or a friend... Now, is this studied adults or children? This study... No, it's the right one. Hold on. I was... Someone messaged me. Um, this study specifically... Here, I can actually check right here. Uh, I, analysis... This is the thing. I am open to hearing this kind of stuff, but, but the research yep, it's that the kids. I have personally seen and the research that... You know, I have seen over the years as I've gone over this topic, it's not something I'm particularly into right now and researching right now, has been highly negative towards the surgeries. If that's changed, if you have proof that it's different, I am willing to consider that and look at that. But this is certainly not the topic I came on here to talk about. And you've been dragging me down rabbit holes of subjects that are not even Damn. contained in this book uh -oh. every single time you bring up a poem. I apologize. Listen, I'm, I'm very, <laughs> I'm very eager. I'm very excited. I'm having a good time. I'm sorry if I get a little bit, uh, a little bit overzealous, but I, I, I felt like perhaps there was a reference there to uh, to trans people because you talked about essentially gender non-conforming people. Not okay. even a little bit. Okay, it's cool. Not, it's not gender non. It's just you know there. If if you are a guy who isn't necessarily like super masculine, maybe you like your craft beers and art instead. I don't necessarily. I wouldn't consider him gender non-conforming. <laughs> that seems. That seems a little I mean, bit weird. I mean, that's what it refers to. The idea is that you typically don't conform to most gender roles. Like, have you ever heard of a, I'm curious, have you ever heard of a femboy? <laughs> Why? I've heard of your catboy <laughs> femboys. Yes, I have. Yeah, like um, femboys can be, uh, can be cisgender, but doesn't necessarily, that doesn't mean they're gay or not, uh, not, well, it doesn't mean they're trans or gay or anything like that. They can be totally straight, but they just like to be, they like to wear the, uh, the thigh high socks and, you know, the, uh, the shortcut little, uh, uh, shorts and everything. And they just dress very feminine. Sure. Look at this base like, battle care. cruiser. Oh my care. God. The point of this poem was to say, if you want to be feminine, you can be feminine. If you want to be masculine, you can be masculine. There are a lot of aspects of today's culture that would you agree, kind of reject and demonize traditional femininity and masculinity? Uh-oh. Um, perhaps, yeah, depending on the space you're in. I've met plenty of people like that. Yeah, so it's like, 
for example, this is a bit of a random one, but the other day I was on YouTube. I was watching, I was on the YouTubes, and I was watching this deep dive analysis of high school musicals Sharpay, and how they, she's actually the victim in the story, but it was a time, and I remember this when I was growing up, the idea of being traditionally feminine was really demonized like you wanted to be a tomboy you wanted to be the girl that dressed a little more plain and was the girl next door because all of the girls in movies that were super feminine were demonized there was the fact that she wore pink skirts the fact that she had the little dog with her she had the long blonde hair she just loved everything sparkly and co constantly in the show they would mock that and make her the villain for having these super just quite frankly feminine <laughs> why are we vaping on stream now guys not good tropes about her and you know you can even see this with the bimbo movement on tiktok where you have girls saying uh hey if i want to walk around and be like legally blonde if i want to be a bit of a bimbo why why are you guys rejecting and saying that can't be my aesthetic why are you people saying that that's wrong or bad so I, I think that, you know, I was just kind of making a point to touch on, you know, if you want to fall into this, that's okay. That's it. It's not a highly politicized point saying you have to be feminine as a woman. It's saying there's been some pushback in our culture against traditional femininity and masculinity and kids. It's okay to be these things. That's fine. And I, once again, I don't think you disagree with that. So you tried to make this a debate about transgenderism, a topic which I will admit I am not particularly well versed in. I'm not going to pretend I know all the studies. I don't. Yes, on surface, it's not. Lauren Southern rhetorically is being very intelligent here. She realizes that like she's not fully fucking briefed on all of these trans issues, which I, I wouldn't expect most people are. And notice how she frames him as being the bad guy. Like, why are you trying to drag me into a debate about trans people? I just wanted to talk about my book. Like, that's what you brought me here for. It's rhetorically effective to make him seem like the kind of like aggressive debate bro something I think is good to put on kids. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but that's not what I came on here to debate you about. And that's not a point I was making in this book. You're very, you've got a very neat trick of making every single poem in here and every single topic in here about a topic you want to debate me on that I'm not talking about. Do, but don't you think that if, a, if, if I wrote a book that was very similar to this and I wrote, it's okay, uh, for you to identify however you like. You don't have to be masculine. You don't have to be feminine. Knowing my takes on um, on these issues, would you not think that perhaps I was alluding to it being okay to be transgender, even if you're a kid? If that's all you were saying, I wouldn't care. That it's okay to be, to be trans care. as a kid? If you were writing it's okay to be trans as a kid, that would be a highly politicized point, the same way that if I were writing, you know, you have to be feminine. We know these are politicized arguments. There are no, there's almost no one in the right wing sphere or conservative sphere of politics that are saying kids should be transgender and should be taught transgender politics. And there's almost no one in the left wing, uh, more progressive realm of politics that is saying all men have to be masculine and all men have to be feminine. So I'm not saying either politicized side of things. Okay. Um, do you want to move on to G? This one's a bit faster. I, I'm just curious what your thoughts are on this. So G is for groupthink. It's easy to accept what those in crowds believe. But if they're wrong, it means more people who will grieve. History has told us- You can't possibly argue against this one. It's a good message. You just, groupthink is bad. We should avoid it. How could you- Oh, God. Oh, no. ...that folks are often led to throwing out their reason and trusting mobs instead. Groupthink is a nasty and quite well-hidden trap. When you first step in it, you might not feel it snap. It's not that it's wrong to trust in other people, but think for yourself so you don't follow them to evil. So, what, what did you mean by I that? I really like <laughs> to think you don't have a problem with that. No, I, I really like to think I, I don't. I don't necessarily. I'm just curious what your thoughts are on it. Um, <laughs> you know, if a group of people tell you to jump, jump off a bridge, don't just jump off a bridge because the group's telling you to do that. If there's a bunch of people on a political bandwagon, whether it be political or social, don't just do something because lots of people are doing it. Think for yourself. Maybe they're all doing it for good reasons, but sometimes crowds do things for bad reasons. Okay. It's that simple. Would it be presumptuous of me to, or perhaps uh, uh, overbearing of me to ask if you have any examples of like a political bandwagon that you've seen people jump on? Um. I mean, any sort of totalitarian bandwagon in history. 
Nazism, communism, you know, I even suggest the mega movement. Don't join a mega movement just because it looks exciting and lots of your friends are wearing red hats. Think about it. Think Lauren is hardcore gunning at the center here with her rhetoric. Oof. Notice how she even gives examples of like Nazism, the MAGA movement. She hits the communism meme to like tap on her people on the right. But like, oof, she's super guns for the center here. How does Xander Hall counter this without coming off as a deranged lefty? Think about whether you support the policies. Think about what... Um, what you really believe deep down. Black Lives Matter. Don't go protest with them unless you understand why you're doing it, unless you understand the cause behind it. And maybe at the end of the day, you decide you do want to join that. Maybe at the end of the day, you think it is for a good reason, but don't just do it because all your friends are going there or because it seems like everyone's doing it on Twitter and Instagram and celebrities have told you it's good. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't disagree with that. I feel like a lot of people, especially nowadays, tend to perhaps stop thinking as much and maybe join into a uh, a group that they feel comfortable in and sort of uh, they're looking for some kind of belonging in a group and that's what pushes them into wherever they end up going whether it be left or right there are a lot of people like that so i do i do you know i had friends that were posting the black square thing and i just because i i saw it i knew they weren't particularly involved in politics and i knew they they likely didn't know much about it and i just messaged them and be like hey so what's what's the black square for and they could not give me they were like oh i i support um i support this black lives matter movement and i'm like oh, okay cool what does it stand for and they just could not give me a succinct answer you know, they didn't bring up police violence they didn't bring up they just said oh it means you you're you're not a racist it means and i'm like no there's so much more to these to these movements and this symbolism that you have to understand and i don't mind if you post it and you have a deeper thing to it like hey i'm posting this square and also i'm going to my local community and i'm going to start talking about how we can bring in police reform how we can bring in uh you know at stop i'm going to stop the violence i'm sorry guys but for people like no one does this dude people post random dumb shit on social media all the time when they have no fucking idea what the fuck any of it is about my favorite threads on reddit were somebody saying shit like what does defund the police even mean? And then somebody shows me like, when we say defund the police, we don't mean defund all the police. We mean reallocate some funding to like social services. And then another lefty will show me like, uh, wrong. Actually, we mean defund all the police. And then someone will show me like, no, 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 no. We're just talking about like demilitarizing the police. Like we can allocate money to social services too, but that's not what they, they like. <laughs> and they'll start arguing with each other over like, what the fuck? And then everybody's like, oh, I don't know. I just put defund the police because I guess, I don't know. I, I like black people. <laughs> like, uh against gang crime to try to make this a more peaceful city. I'm actually doing something that affects change, but I see so many people just posting. It's like when people put the flag filter on their Facebook, and it's really irritating when people don't know what they're supporting and there's no real action behind it. And once again, I'd like to think you'd agree with that. No, I, I actually don't necessarily disagree with that. I think um, something that oh, I find God. interesting is I feel like Perhaps there's a difference between like people on Twitter adding like the little thing to their to their name because they just want to lend some support or at the very least uh, virtue signal support and um, mm -hmm. someone joining like a movement and participating in that movement because they want to feel like they belong or because their friends are doing yeah. it because they see a lot of people doing it. And I guess at the end of the day, I'm a consequentialist. I prefer when people have the- Stop, please stop saying this. Stop bringing up normative frameworks for ethics in normal fucking conversations. Please stop, stop, please stop. I regret ever talking about philosophy. I should have made these sub-only streams before everybody copied my fucking words. Please stop. We do not talk about any level of ethics outside of fucking jerk-off philosophy conversations, okay? Fuck. The right reasons to do what they're doing. But if it results in good outcomes, it's typically not something I'm going to get as upset about or- There are um, so many problems with this type of thinking. About, oh God. Unless I'm seeing something bad happen because of it. I, I encourage a people take. to think for themselves. But if people don't think for themselves and they engage in a movement that's overall causing good to happen in the world, I don't really see it as, uh. um, as like a huge problem. But don't get me wrong. I think encouraging, you know, uh, yeah. self- self-reliance and thinking about what you're doing for the right reasons is important. I, I see what you mean. I've become in the last few years largely 
anti-movement and cause in general. That's gonna sound weird initially saying it, but I've found over the years, like even in kind of right-wing circles, people would get into these movements and they'd, when they try to justify their behavior, the things they were fighting for, the arguments they were having online, they'd say, this is for the movement. This is for the cause. And I'd ask them what the cause was, and they'd be like, well, the, you know, the cause is progressivism, or the cause is Trump. And it seemed that the cause or the movement had become the cause. It was kind of a self-creating, there was no real people behind it, right? To me, if the cause doesn't actually come down to affecting and helping real people, and you're just doing it, I'm doing this for Black Lives Matter. So you're acting for the cause. You're not actually doing it for someone's life. I'm doing this for the mega movement. There has to be real people, real community, real family that you are fighting for change. Whether it be, I have someone in my community that is deeply affected by gang crime. And so I've joined some sort of movement to fight against gang crime because my community and people I care about are impacted. Whereas I think a lot of people join movements and causes not because they are connected to their family and community, but rather the opposite. They are disconnected from their family and community and they have some really, this much deeper desire for just a narcissistic purpose in life. They need something to motivate them and they need something to, to drive them and to justify them being in politics. So they just, it's all for the cause. The cause, guys, we gotta fight for the cause. And they have nothing so actually tying them to why they're fighting for change, so, which I worry about and I think is unhealthy. What do you think would be the biggest difference between you and I and your average person who goes to a Black Lives Matter march or puts the little um, the flag or the block in their uh, Twitter name? What would, you, what would you, just off the top of your head, guess would be the biggest difference between you and me and them? I'd have to know them on an individual level. I'd have to know their motivations for doing that. Well, bro If there's someone who's doing it just because they saw a lot of other people do it, I would say the difference is, is I have really delved into the subjects that I care about to the point of, you know, flying over to Europe to go investigate the migrant crisis from the other side with the traffickers and seeing it firsthand. Also, and I will say, when I was initially involved in politics, I think I had a bit of this problem where it was just for the cause and I hadn't built a lot of community and real things that I cared about, which I've changed now. And part of the reason I'm in politics is because I really care about my family. I care about my community and I care about their future. And that's where most of my life is focused. And I worry about two groups of people. One group where they don't actually have anything real outside of this political world. And the reason they are involved in causes is just for the sake of feeling they have some purpose and they, they enjoy the drama online. They enjoy the fights. It's, it, it makes them feel justified in attacking other people and the people who are just doing it blindly because they're scared of being socially rejected for not supporting these movements. I don't think anyone's gonna get socially rejected for saying nothing about it unless they're actively standing really? against it. Because it happened to Chris Pratt. He said he didn't want to go to a Biden rally and they tried to cancel him he, online. Yeah, he yeah. didn't say he nothing about it. He said canceled for doing nothing. Yeah, he said he didn't want to go there. Also, Chris Pratt had been canceled. Oh, uh, dude, this is such a bad take by Xander. There have been plenty of people um, like they get called out for not making more. This is kind of the weird thing about being like a celebrity because we looked at this where it was like if celebrities didn't make statements on like things related to BLM or the rights or whatever, they would be like, condemned like why the fuck are you saying and then if celebrities would make statements and things people like why the fuck are you talking you're a celebrity nobody fucking cares it was like a really really weird um Chappelle addressed this when he did his skit where he was like the reason why I didn't say anything for so long is because I think the streets talk for themselves they don't need a celebrity blah 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 but even Chappelle had to address this when he came out and he did his um um it's called like 831 or however long um Floyd the guy was on Floyd's neck um yeah the silence is deafening me me, me. yeah this is just not true canceled the J called this certainly yeah, more valid yeah. things before that however no, 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 but you just said people aren't being canceled for not doing anything. When I have friends- They're not being canceled for it, but they'll get called out for it. That are Instagram influencers, totally non-political, that said they got hundreds of messages from people saying, how dare you haven't, post you haven't posted a black square, you haven't posted anything about the rallies in the States, how dare you? It's the idea that no one is getting canceled for just standing back and saying nothing is just untrue. It's untrue. When I, maybe it's because I'm like a political creator and when I think about getting canceled, I think of much more virulent, hardcore things and like right. getting a few mean messages. When I get canceled for anything, it is way worse than, than like what, what those people probably went through. And I'm a comparatively okay. much smaller figure. Okay, unfortunately, I hate to say it, um, we gotta move past the, um, 
this meme, K, cancel culture is fucking AIDS, and that shit needs to, you need to bully the fuck out of people that engage in it, okay? Because it's not just, like, random shit anymore. It's like, wait, Ludic Church Expedition. Oh, they're going to my colony, you fucking cucks. I can't get back there in time. Um, cancel culture is aged. Okay, stop supporting people that engage in it. Don't do this shit. Cancel people for good reasons, not because they tweeted out some stupid joke fucking 12 years ago. The motto of Black Lives Matter is literally, in some cases, uh, silence is violence. So okay. either yep. you support us or you are a violent individual. Yeah. You are not allowed to not agree with so, us or you are a violent individual. Silence, so the, like, silence is violence means that if it comes to it, if you are not willing to step up when the only option is support this movement or don't, when that is the only option at the head of it, when an election comes around or whatever, um, that if you are willing to do nothing, then you are essentially allowing the status quo to continue. And the status quo is bad. Right. right. So my point is, people will get in trouble and will be that's attacked not, for not participating in these political That's movements. not referring to just making your screen, like posting a little black screen on your on your Instagram. I didn't get in trouble for, for not doing that. I, I don't think I posted like little- That's because you, you talk about this in all other realms, right? Um, actually, no, I get like tons of shit from people that, that are like very progressive. I get canceled by the left constantly and I didn't- Wait, so did you get in trouble or didn't you get in trouble? Wait, that was the weirdest one, or maybe he means, well, if we're being, that sounded weird. I understand what he's saying. But he's like, I didn't get in trouble for this. She's like, where? Oh, maybe that's because he's like, no, I get in trouble for this all the time. Wait, which one was it? But maybe he means he didn't get in trouble for not posting the black square thing, but he does get in trouble for it otherwise, I guess. Did not get a single, a uh, uh, hateful message message whenever I didn't post like a black screen on my Instagram or Twitter. Not a single message. Okay, well, I know people who did. And ultimately this G is for groupthink bit. I, I know you just said you don't really mind that much if people, uh, as long as they're doing good things, even if they don't understand why they're doing good things, it doesn't matter that much. The problem is when people don't think about why they're doing good things, they can easily be turned to bad things. And if people's understanding of the politics they're supporting is fickle and not very, and very true. thin, they that makes long-term success of whatever your political ideology is extremely hard. And it also makes them easy to just turn to the next group. Extreme. Whatever that's also be, true. Yeah. Whenever that's popular. So mm -hmm. I really think you should care a lot more about people who are just doing good things without thinking about it. Because that, those, those are the people that are all- If you guys remember from your edgy atheist days, I know I've got a lot of edgy ex-atheists here, hopefully. I'm an edgy ex-atheist, or an ex-edgy atheist. No, I'm still edgy, so I'm an edgy ex-edgy atheist. I used to be an edgy atheist, I'm still edgy, but I'm not an edgy atheist. Well, actually, I kind of am, fuck religion. Um, there was a famous quote that we all wheeled out to fight with uh, religious bros, where we would say, um, <clears throat> we would say, um, <sighs> I'm going to find the exact quote so I don't butcher it. With or without religion, good people can behave well and bad people can do evil. But for good people to do evil, that takes religion. From Steven Weinberg. Edgy. Um, and it's true here, too. If you've got, like, well-meaning people blindly following ideologies, they can be led down some bad paths. Yeah. Ultimately, usually utilized by dictators and tyrants. True. If you look at my, if you look at my uh, uh, most recent YouTube videos, a significant amount of them are me going after people also on the left who do that same kind of thing. I, I criticize this plenty. People looking for a group and they join into say like leftism, like what I am a leftist, and they they do it because they want uh, community, right? And I and I criticize that plenty. But I think because you brought up a few anecdotes of people that. Um, didn't like they put the little black block in their thing or they had the flag or they said BLM but when you asked them they didn't know what the issues were I think one of the biggest differences between us and them that you have to remember is that you and I are media trained public figures that make our livings off of advocating for the issues that we care about a lot of these people are just your average Joes they maybe have a following on Twitter but they aren't these political figures oh, or political shit. activists that My dedicate ships. their lives to learning about and advocating Correct. for these issues Correct, which is why it is such a problem that we have created a society that forces everyone to have a political position on every single topic. We want every, like, 
celebrities have to be an advocate for every single political issue, every single election, even though, once again, they're not experts in it. The average person has to speak up and has to be an advocate. For this is kind of true. It used to be, I remember back in the 2000s, especially relating to people like Leonardo DiCaprio, like our memes were that like, fuck off. We don't care what celebrities think about political issues. Fuck you. In fact, that's kind of the foundation of the, the Ja Rule joke. Uh, people don't know where any of these jokes come from. Just, I, I'm convinced they just repeat them without understanding. The Ja Rule joke was Chappelle basically saying that like, I don't care. I don't care what the experts say. I want to know what Ja Rule thinks. He's making fun of like celebrities commenting on social issues, right? Like, why the fuck do you care about what some celebrities says? But nowadays it's expected. Every celebrity needs to be giving their opinion on these social issues. It's incredibly important to have like um, uniformity among all celebrities for these issues. For all of these different issues that they could never have the time to properly investigate. And that is a lot of pressure. And this is something that is put on us from a very, very young age. You have kids that are doing climate marches that have no idea what any of the data, any of the information on this is about. And they're just doing it because they've been told that it's their job to save the world. No, it's their job to be learning, you know, basic life skills in school. And they, they, they're being used as political pawns in so many cases. And this is ultimately the problem I'm pointing out in my book is all of these people that are either doing it because they want to look good or are legitimately being used as pawns by political manipulators okay. when we don't have the time to understand every topic fully, quite frankly. Some right. people can be advocates for topics that they understand very deeply and not be political advocates, of so, course, but we're being asked a lot of as humans sure. these days. Too so much. I think that political disaffection is one of the biggest problems that we could possibly have in our in our world. I think being politically oh, aware no. of what's going on and having a side that you support, ideally the side that makes the world better, is extremely important. I don't care what age you are, you should have a fair understanding of what's going on in the world and understand how to make the world better and probably have a desire to make the world better. Obviously with climate change, that's an issue that concerns everybody. So having kids engage in those marches, they're learning about climate change in school. This is an important issue. You, you learn about how the climate works in school. This isn't like even comparable to an issue like the the trans thing right this is a distinct the trans thing thing you would le learn in el elementary school you learn about climate and climate okay. change well, let, this let is something you. that I you should I care disagree about with you i think the problem isn't that not enough people want to change the world it's that not enough people want to change their communities everyone wants to look good by saying they're going to change the world everyone wants to look good by holding a sign and saying and violence, but that doesn't actually do anything. Going in and helping your communities, building up your communities, volunteering, that kind of stuff changes things, but it doesn't look good. You can't make it, uh, you know, you can't hashtag it and get tons this is of kind tons of, of likes. Sure. How did, it, how did you get so exploded, you dumb fuck? It's world, a fucking space station, you fucking moron. It, but no one actually wants to focus yep, so on their community the, and real things the because reason that's not Popular. Yeah, sure. So, so the reason, the reason why you can't think of a lot of examples oh, of people shit. doing community efforts to make the like their community better is because those things don't get a lot of traction. But I myself focus a lot on on community organizing. I want to do um, a canvassing for candidates that I support in back in Florida eventually when I have enough money for it um, when the midterms come around. These things don't make headlines. You probably wouldn't end up seeing it all that much. But if you've looked into it, I've, I've definitely looked into it. Every single city, every uh, uh, local area that I can think of has like a local DSA chapter. They have clubs at universities and colleges that work together to try to lobby their local governments for uh, certain policies like climate related or with social issues. There is plenty okay, of com well, community acti activism that. that happens. But you can't ignore the, the worldwide Let's scale. Let's focus on, okay, for sure. Let's focus on everything else because you've just suggested that things aren't actually, people aren't political enough. They are too disaffected. Once again, I really, really disagree with that. We are at the point where we have literally politicized pillows. Pillows. <laughs> we have got, you, you have uh, the my pillow guy versus. Okay, to be fair. I don't think it's pillows that are being politicized. I think didn't that didn't the CEO of that company make some really fucking insane? I'd have to go back and look, but I thought that guy was saying some crazy shit. That that kid from Parkland, I can't remember his name. He was gonna make his own. Xander Hall's gonna agree with her on this. Oh no. 
We politicized pillows. If you don't I, think we have got so much politics coming from every realm, every you can't even eat cereal. Why is my ice cream yelling at me about Black Lives Matter? I just want to buy a damn taco without being told about how I'm ruining the environment or affecting the world. Like corporations have literally become full on. It, they've embraced this because they know they can get sales out of it. It's every single aspect do, of our lives. Like, no, do we you, need to actually live. We need to have a little bit of real world perspective do, as well. Do you think perhaps there's a, there is a something to notice when you see that what you're getting upset about right now are messages on packaging for food and Twitter battles between the uh, surviving victim of a school shooting and the MyPillow guy. And then when you have, you have BLM activists out there trying to advocate for justice or reform of the justice system and systemic top-down changes to help improve the socioeconomic position of black people in this country. Christ. Doesn't seem like there's maybe a disparity between what, what you're upset about here and how you feel political disaffectedness doesn't harm the world and what people that are politically involved, mostly on the left, are, are talking about, the issues that they're concerned about? Oh, I've seen, you know, I've seen the memes where it shows... Um, Hey guys, we've changed the voice actor on The Simpsons to be to be representative of Black people, and you know, like the Black Lives Matter Wojak, like Jesus, all we wanted was close. systemic change. Like we don't want some another rich Hollywood guy being hired or another corporate platitude. We're getting tired of this, and I agree with that. But these issues are ridiculous, and it's crazy that people are talking about them so much, and I'm probably a bit of pro part of the problem there because I see it and I get frustrated and add to the conversation. And there are people on a community level that are trying to make change that are getting ignored because we've politicized everything and so much useless stuff. We've got, we're talking about the problem with kids' books that are completely harmless and politicizing and having debates over that, which you don't even disagree with. Um, instead of talking about real issues. Because we just need content. Everyone needs content, don't they? Uh, sure. So that, I don't know what that has to do with what I just said. The argument that I was making is I think that being <laughs> oh disaffected God. from politics is harmful and that everyone should care about making the world better, making their community better as well. And when you brought up ways in which people are too involved in politics, what you brought up was pack like political messages on food packaging and Twitter fights between uh, public figures and not real issues that are going on. It seems like what, what would you say affecting you right now is like a huge systemic issue that's like really affecting your life very badly. The lockdown of countries and not being able to see my family. Okay, that's something that people should care about. Co okay. When people say that like Lockdown. Okay, so I've noticed people do this. Okay, people will be like, <clears throat> "Lockdowns don't work." Well, are you sure? And they're like, "Find me a place where a lockdown has worked that's comparable to America." And we'd be like, "Well, what about like South Korea or Australia or New Zealand?" It's like those places are islands. It's not the same. Where do you think the coronavirus in the United States came from, you stupid fuck? Do you think people walked from fucking China to the United States in order to in order to get people sick with the coronavirus? You fucking moron. They fucking flew in on goddamn airplanes, you stupid fuck. Don't, why, I don't understand this idea that like Australia, New Zealand, South Korea, these aren't like the United States. Those are islands. Okay, and I'm pretty sure airport, last I checked, Australia has more than one fucking airport. I'm pretty sure New Zealand has more than one fucking airport. I'm pretty sure South Korea has planes, okay? People can get to these places the same as they can especially places like South Korea. Holy shit. People fly in from all over the world to go to some of these places. Christ. Sorry. Fucking so stupid. Coronavirus. We want to get past this coronavirus shit as soon as possible. We want to distribute vaccines. Is this not a political okay. issue that people should be caring about? Because that's something that affects your life directly. I want, to, I, want to quickly, I want to quickly go back to your point. My point is that people are not disaffected they are involved in politics but they are being brought into it and involved in the wrong ways rather than on a community level rather than where they can actually make change they're being distracted by all of these ridiculous platitudes which i think ultimately we agree we've just been talking past each other so i'm saying people are not disaffected from politics they are being used and abused by politicians and corporations to talk about issues that make them popular and they're following groupthink to talk about useless issues instead of thinking for themselves and going and create going and involving themselves in politics that are actually really helpful on a community level so once again i think we agree there 
we're just talking past each other. I, I'm, I'm, ex I'm absorbing everything that you're saying here, okay? I'm internalizing it, I promise. I guess what I'm trying to say is, I feel like, I, at least here in America, because I'm most aware of American politics, I know you've traveled the world quite a bit. You're from Canada, you're currently in Australia. Oh shit, what if the coronavirus is like fucking vampires? And it can't travel over water. I didn't even think of that. Um, for me, here in America, I'm pretty sure most people, or at least a significant amount of people, don't even vote. That's a big issue to me. That is political disaffection at work. And to make it even worse, there are people who are going to decide who they vote for in 2024 or in the midterms based on Dr. Seuss getting canceled or because the My Pillow guy is far right. These are going to be issues that people decide to vote on because it's the culture war. I'm sure you've heard of it. You know it's what? the culture Listen, war. No, no, no. Cancel culture is a problem for everyone because people are literally afraid of losing their jobs, losing their friendships, losing their reputation. And that's political. Cancel culture. And this, this is not a right wing issue either. I just saw Lindsay Ellis publish a big, huge critique of cancel culture that yep. was really phenomenally done from the left. This is not, cancel culture is an issue that is affecting people on every level. I, and I feel like it's not is to ignore working class people that don't get in the media, that get fired from their jobs for posting a meme they thought was funny, that your worker decided was Pivot. sexist. This is, you're Run. ignoring to- My mega point got disrupted. Yeah, you're, you're, you're pivoting. Is what, Pivot. I, is what my point is. You're, you pivoted into an argument that I feel like supports mine. Fallacy, if cancel fallacy, culture committed. is so dangerous and it, it can harm everybody, people can lose their jobs because they tweet out a joke. Is that something that we shouldn't be politically disaffected about? That people should be like, okay, maybe we should perhaps look at issues like this a little bit more nuanced and maybe not engage in dogpiling? Because when you, when you advocate and say that political disaffection is good, then you're essentially advocating for the, uh, um, the, enable, the enabling of cancel culture. Real quick, just to explain the, what's going on in this conversation, this is a classic, classic conservative liberal divide. I'm speaking US here, classic conservative liberal divide. Conservatives tend to be far more community focused and liberals tend to be far more worldly focused and it causes this weird disconnect where they can't really talk to each other um, both sides make good points but like a lot of conservatives so so if, if we take like the standard left-leaning position of like conservatives are evil they hate everybody blah 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 what conservatives genuinely advocate for is well a, a nice conservative will say like well i just think communities should take care of themselves i don't want the federal government coming in and making us do things a certain way we should all be able to take care of ourselves on a local level whereas like left-leaning people are a bit more worldly or a bit more globalized with their outlook um so that's you, we keep hearing this point i don't think either of them are aware of it but you keep hitting on this point over and over again where lauren something's like listen i think people should care about issues but i think those issues should be like volunteering in their community and Xander Hall is like, well, listen, I think that people need to be like very focused on like the national level scene because they vote on this stuff. Both of them are correct. Um, they're missing each other here. They're not understanding the disconnection here. Cancel culture has come as a result of the politicizing of everything. We're going to make pillows political. We're going to make ice cream political. We're going to make, you know, every TV show we watch, we have to analyze on a political level and decide whether it's okay or not. I hate that. And that is also part of what has led to cancel culture and people who don't want any involvement in politics being dragged into it and analyzed on a scale of progressive ideology that in some cases they don't even understa understand. And, cancel, you know, cancel culture has been around for a lot longer than even the internet has, but cancel culture as we see it today, especially nowadays in recent years, seems to be propagated mostly by the fact that everybody is inside, everybody's on the internet, nobody yeah. is able to go out and, and do things in the real world, so everything that happens on the internet feels like it's going to be the end of the world. Trust me, as a victim of cancel culture, I see the kind of people that go after me and try to cancel me terminally online, okay? I would say yes, the popularity online, of- I agree. I would say the popularity of the internet is what pro propagates cancel culture the most. People on the right do cancel culture. People on the left do a shit ton of cancel culture. Most of those doing cancel culture are 14-year-olds with pit crew avatars on Twitter. Now, I agree. I feel like um, there is a nuanced conversation, very much like what you referenced Lindsay Ellis had before, that can be had about cancel culture. Political disaffection is one of those things that prevents people from having that conversation because then it becomes two-sided. You don't get, if you can move those politically disaffected people to a nuanced take on something like cancel culture, instead of it being, cancel culture is good, take accountability for that joke that you tweeted back in 2009 that you need to be destroyed for, you need to lose your job, and cancel culture is the end of the world, everyone is going to die, we need to stop it, you, your life could be ruined at any second because of this or this, and it's never, it's never okay. It's going to become a two-way battle, no uh, uh, middle of the line that takes a look at it in a nuanced way because of all the political disaffection. Okay, I, uh, I'll 
I'll agree with you there. Once I don't, I disagree to the level of. I think there are some people who are certainly politically disaffected, but I also worry about the over politicization of everything and everyone. But I think what we're disagreeing here is what people are being politicized over and caring about being the wrong topics and the wrong conversations, and some people being left out of those conversations altogether. Um, I think a big part of this, and this is what conservatives have been bringing up for a long time, is we can't really have that nuanced conversation about how we feel about cancel culture and ways to solve it. We can't have these nuanced conversations about politics when, when this cancel culture exists, so it's a self-perpetuating problem, because people are too scared of losing their jobs. People are too scared of you know, ruining their lives over talking about politics. I have friends that have completely left the realm of politics altogether. They are never planning on partaking in it ever again because they got some crazy docs put up of them online because they got the list in some sort of political sphere because they got in trouble with their employer for posting their political thoughts online like a Gina Carano has gotten fired for posting her thoughts as much as I think her take you know comparing I always think comparals to the Holocaust tend to be a little a little exaggeratory and silly and cringe sometimes, but you know, lots of people make that take left wing and right wing, and that's her thoughts on the issue. Jesus. And instead of immediately saying she's a bigot, let's have that conversation. No, she gets fired from her job. So if you're worried about political disaffection, making sure no one's allowed to talk about issues without being afraid of losing their job or being dogpiled by tons of well, radical communities is not a great way to do that. So we have to deal with the radical communities. We have to deal with the cancel culture and we have to deal with the people who are constantly slandering anyone who tries to involve in politics and have nuanced conversations which you yeah. have dealt with as well and i have dealt with from yourself yeah so i think there's an elephant in the room that's also a pretty large propagator of this that i didn't necessarily uh -oh. want to get into because uh -oh. it's fairly it's fairly complicated, but obviously capitalism is a big cause of this as well. Big corporations <laughs> like Disney, if there's a lot of hubbub happening about someone like Gina Carano, Gina Carano is not going to sit down and debate me on stream. I highly doubt it. I added her on Twitter, and she didn't respond. Uh, I would love to sit down and have a debate like what we're having now over the issues that Gina Carano was tweeting about. I think a lot of it is capitalism. These corporations are gonna fire an actress that tweets about this thing that gets people upset. Um, these companies, and they recognize that it's popular to be more progressive in this area, are going to advertise that progressivism in their products, their movies, their food, everything like that, packaging. Um, and obviously the creators of these products are going to have their own political views and they're going to build a following based around those political views, the Goya beans, the My MyPillow, um, the all of that's going to continue yeah. to happen when we live on, when we have these industries whose main motivation is to make money, they're going to do whatever they need to to make money. They're never Absolutely. going to go. They're never going to push the envelope too far, obviously, but they will go as far as it takes to make them money. So that seems like something more so to criticize about those industries and the economic system within we with, with which we live, rather than like this intangible idea that kind of floats around the Why ether can't that I we can't really ships? stick with like a, a a spear to figure out whatever what exactly is causing it or who is propagating it. Right. Comrade, can I say something about, uh, about uh -oh. the problem of capitalism? One of the biggest issues I've I, I agree with you on all of this, actually. And one of the biggest issues that I've identified, certainly in the media sphere, is something that I have, I'm working on an article on it right now, something I've dubbed systemic, cap systemic tabloidism and how capitalism... Remember... Populists do not care about capitalism. If you are a lefty, stop thinking that like a Charlie Kirk or a Lauren Southern is going to like hardcore simp for fucking capitalism. They won't, okay? They will just as quickly disavow it as any fucking socialist or communist or whatever, okay? A lot of these people are kind of like anti-corporatism um, these days. Don't make that mistake of thinking that you're gonna get like an easy W on some shit like that, okay? Sorry, hold on, Jesus and dehumanization has been pushing journalists to divert all of the important- I'm sorry, I shouldn't say capitalism. I should say more specifically corporatism. Most of these people will shit on big corporations and big corporate money or whatever, not necessarily capitalism. I'll be more clear there actually, sorry. Conversations we need to be having to kind of this just like horribly shallow cancel culture type conversation. You know, if you, you have all of these sociopaths 
or not all these sociopaths, some sociopaths and some people that are just dragged into their system of writing, creating clickbait, having to write four to five articles a day, having to find something to cancel, having to find some problem with society without any deep nuanced view or perspective on it because they constantly have to make money for the Huffington Post. They have to make money for the Guardian. They have to make money uh, for you know, the ABC, whatever it might be. And it's all become about profit and not about people. And it used to be also about tackling me? really shit. big problems and powerful people in society. We need to talk about the problem with pedophilia and Prince Andrew. We need to talk about uh, these issues with it's, it's crime that's going on in government and politicians that are making sketchy deals to wow. make their companies Q-Anon money shit. and uh, crony capitalism. But another aspect of systemic tabloidism is while pushing people to just write clickbait they also have realized they can only sl- they can slander people and slander makes them more money and the more money they make they have more money to, to defend from slander suits but they can only slander people of a certain class because otherwise if you slander someone like hulk hogan who can afford to make a sustained court case against you your whole outlet will shut down like Gawker has. So what they've done is they've found a class of people that have lots of views, have lots of eyeballs on them, but don't have the same amount of money and just happen to be in direct competition with the mainstream media, which is YouTubers. And they've made them the main target of all of their slander, harassment, saying they're, we're horrible, horrible bigots, we're ruining politics, whilst ignoring Mm-hmm. these genuinely wealthy, powerful people. Because once again, it's about money. They know we can't sue them. They know we can't shut down uh, their companies because the average YouTuber's salary, you'd have to pay three years of it to go with the defamation case. Yeah, I'm, I'm, and we need to address that. We need yeah. to address these problems. Yeah, of course. I agree. These are... I, I am not this like hardcore, we need to have, <laughs> we need the... to have just a capitalist I... free market where you can sell babies heroin and have them working in your yeah, of, you know, of course. Bauxite mine for two dollars an hour. Yeah, of course. I feel like this is. It might be. This was a bit of a departure from what I was talking about. But I feel like where We've where you moved into. We, we, we have. We have. But it's fun. It's fun. Um, but I feel like this goes back to the political disaffection. People are are being sold what what sells. They and it's mostly not political, yeah. like serious political issues. How many people do you think, if you asked right now, know about the Uyghur genocide happening in China right now? Oh my God. Most yeah. people probably right. don't because that kind of news doesn't sell. So that's what I'm talking about when I say that I want to fight against political disaffection. I feel like that's a huge problem. People. So why do you guys not attack the media who have been such a problem in this? This I do. has been a completely concern. Well, largely, if you look at it, the conservatives have been the ones that have been battling with the mainstream media saying these guys are lying these guys are manipulating the because public. when They're conservatives slandering people when conservatives constantly... attack the mainstream media they do it for the wrong reasons and from the wrong position i attack the mainstream Who decides media what the wrong reasons are investigations you can you can have independent journalists that investigate these things when cons- when like so, how do you, conserv- so when i attack the mainstream media for slander you think i'm doing it for the wrong reasons can you give me an example of this so, like, let's say the New York Times falsely published that uh, the Christchurch shooter donated to me, and this was republished in multiple different outlets. They then deleted their tweet, but didn't. the other outlets had already republished it, so they didn't correct it. And now tons of people think this actually happened. Um, is that something worthy So of questioning the mainstream media for? So the Christchurch shooter donated to a organization that I believe you worked with for Borderless, I think was what actually happened. And no, but none of that happened <laughs> from no, from my understanding. The, which, so which organization it was in, it was in Bulgaria. Borderless? It was in Bulgaria. in Bulgaria. It was a it was a Bulgarian like militia that was searching for um, uh, uh, like illegal um, uh, uh, refugees. In, in the woods, and that uh, organization was associated with like actual designated like white supremacist uh, other organizations. So this is the first, this is and the they first donated I'm that. hearing of that, and that wasn't the claim. That I'm not claiming that you knew York about Times that, State. but I I'd, I'd, I'd already learned about that, and I I knew of that. So I understand I understand where you're coming from because I'm pretty sure yeah, the well, Christchurch once, once shooter again, didn't that's donate not even to you. The claim. That's not even the claim the New York Times made, and I've never heard of that. And I feel like I would have heard of it by now if that were even remotely true. Oh, was it was it generation? Uh, maybe you can I send think? that to me. Maybe. Yeah, sure. I can. I can. Whenever. 
oh, if you no. want me to. I have to do it off uh, screen. But anyways, the, the, point there, the point there is is that they are spreading demonstrable slanderous lies that ruin people's Hold on. lives. Did they? Did and they? Not correcting it. Did they correct it? Did they remove it from the article? No, they did. They they just delete. They deleted their tweet about it, and then all of these other publications had already shared it and shared the tweet and, uh, you know. Uh, cited the tweet and they never posted a correction. D then so it was never adjusted. Then you're you're losing out on a lot of money right now. I know it's expensive, but no, the, I'm not. the payoff. No, I'm not. Do you know how you much can the average you can sue for that? No, you, you can't. Can, Stop if saying you can that. Prove anybody that says that like defamation and slander, you can't dude, if you're a public figure suing for that is like almost impossible. Okay. This is a fantasy created by YouTubers and Twitch streamers that it's so easy to sue somebody for defamation or slander. It is so impossible. the the bar for this is so high as a public figure, okay? If you can prove that the that these media outlets knowingly lied about something you can objectively prove to be untrue, uh, that there's no evidence anywhere that the Christchurch shooter actually donated to you, you can make quite a bit of money off of a suit for that. You think I haven't talked to lawyers about this? Well, I believe the quote directly from my lawyer that I spoke to last month was, Lauren, defamation is a rich man's game. And this is where the classism comes into it once again. Oh, These classism is a big issue. Do Don't get me wrong. I know about of slap course. suits, but like, if you, you're, you because, can. Do you, do, okay, let me ask you, Xander. Do you have a hundred k? Just. No, I don't. Around? You're much larger than I am, okay, though. Well, then you couldn't do it either. I, I don't have a hundred k sitting around. <laughs> well, I don't know what, how much people think YouTubers make, but you, you, people don't just have hundreds of thousands of dollars that of they can throw not. away. Plus, in the states, you have to be able to prove malice. You have to be able to prove Actual all these extenuating factors. So the media are able to get away with so many lies, so much dishonesty. I'll even point out the ABC here. I actually need to go and correct it today. I've been meaning to because I accidentally believed the ABC who shared a video of this uh, dance crew twerking in front of a bunch of, like doing kind of a twerk style dance in front of the launching of a military ship and the governor general was there and all these high up individuals in military. And this, the way they do these ships is these ships adopt the historic names of military boats that have already gone out. How is the media held accountable here? There is no, when it comes to media accountability, there's no win for everybody. Basically, you've got two problems. Is that one, should the media be allowed to just publish whatever they want about people? Or two, should we be allowed to sue the media for whatever they publish? Now, the problem is that if we're allowed to sue the media, if we think they've published something that's wrong about us, even if they were doing it in a good faith, then what happens is you create like this chilling effect where you just, where the media now, let's say for instance, you're the media and you come across a really big story about like a public figure and you think you might have a really big scandal, say the Matt Gates stuff, right? Um, but now you don't know if you should publish it because maybe you're maybe you're not 100% correct, maybe you're like 95% sure. But if you publish it and it's wrong, now you get sued out of existence. Okay, well, fuck, we're not gonna touch those types of stories anymore. We're not gonna hold politicians or big business people accountable because if we publish it and it's wrong, well, now we're fucked, right? This is why the courts, I think generally, generally in the United States, the courts after um, New York Times v. Sullivan sides with um, the media here when it comes to criticizing public figures. So when you're criticizing a public figure, in order to prove like defamation or slander, you have to meet something called an actual malice standard. So not only do I have to prove that you published false information about me, I have to prove that you knew at the time of publishing that that information was false, which is almost, that's an unbelievably high bar to set. But the reason is because we probably should protect the media publishing these things because otherwise they're not gonna publish anything about powerful people because they'll just be sued out of existence. What the fuck is this shit? That sale, people who have died, ships that have been kind of sunk, you know, or not kind of sunk in World War II. And the idea is when you give them the same name and rename them, the, the crews never die and they live on. It's a very important on. ceremony hold, that occurs on. here. I, I feel like this is like a really big pivot, but I'm looking, I looked it up right now and it does not seem like uh, defamation suits are nearly as expensive as you made them out to be. Okay, wait, can we, can we get back to the he, he, Oh God, don't Google it. If you don't know, just shut the fuck up. You're never, ever, 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 ever suing a mainstream media publication. When you are a public figure, Figure, you're not gonna win a defamation suit if they think that what they're publishing is actually accurate, right? There's you're never you're never gonna do it. Don't do it. Just don't just don't do this, okay? This is why I was taunting uh, that JF guy so much when he said he was gonna sue me for twenty million dollars. Like against a public figure, you're, you're, dude, you're never gonna meet that standard. It's not gonna happen. That I just want to make this point here. Okay, sure. Um, so this, I mean, I initially shared it and I was like, this is like read your audience. This looks ridiculous. What are you guys doing? Everyone looks so uncomfortable there. Turns out. 
actually the dance crew were the victims. They went to go hire an Aboriginal dance crew to do a traditional, to do a kind of Aboriginal dance to open the ceremony. And the dance crew asked them, would you like a contemporary, more pop culture dance, or would you like a traditional dance? Whoever hired them said they wanted the uh, modern pop culture one, so they did that. And the ABC went on to edit the governor general watching when he wasn't even there concocting this entire situation that make the dancers look horrible, that make it look like they're just disrespecting the governor general and mocking this when none of that occurred. And this happens on Is a daily basis, both towards the uh, right wing audience who will get outraged over it and a left wing audience who will get outraged over it. And we cannot have proper conversations about politics. We cannot have any sort of real battle against the problems caused by the powers that be. What? When oh, hold on, you're, ramp, you're, you're going on, getting, you're gish we are getting so much <laughs> No, okay, don't say the G word, so stop. Okay. That's the point I'm making. But sorry, go, go ahead with the defamation case because I can show you the email from my lawyer quoting me 100K to 150. Okay, maybe you have a bad lawyer, I don't know. I've never- Oh, why would you do this? Ah, I'm cringing, don't argue this point. Sued anyone for defamation? No, that's the average. I've I've never sued anyone for defamation before, but it seems as though in most cases, whenever a news organization, a mainstream news organization, puts out a outright slanderous, easy to prove lie, typically they're held to account for that. Now, don't get me wrong, slap suits are a big problem. You're aware of like what a slap suit is, right? <laughs> Sorry, explain that. I, I, but I'm just getting over the. No, most most mainstream outlets are not held accountable for slander, and I really, it's so difficult cross border. It is so difficult. Um, once again, you have to be able to prove malice. There's a statute of limitations, so if you don't do it within a year, you can't sue them anymore. There are so many extenuating circumstances that would not be included in what you just looked up in your Google search. I really would encourage people to look up a story, which surprisingly knew it was finally covered pop, uh, properly by BuzzFeed about a Polish family. Oh, I, I have to find the, the name, Polish photographer. Buzzfeed right. Metro. I'm just gonna find the article. Okay, listen. All right, before before you go on any longer, I'll take I'll take your word for it that yeah. these court that these big organizations are able to get away with spreading blatant lies. But at least from what I have seen, especially with with the New York Times specifically, I've seen them go back on articles that I've been involved in because I had a pretty close involvement with this one. Um, post something that was accidentally misinformation and voluntarily go back and change it once they were made aware. And it wasn't a big deal. They went back, they changed it. Um, I think it had something to do with Philip DeFranco. This is typically what ends up happening. If there are cases where some person is lied about by a mainstream media organization, if I find out about it, you better believe me to get on top of that shit, okay? I'm a very- You might be able to get retractions and stuff, but that's way, way, way different than suing somebody for defamation. Big uh, a propagator of the idea that if you have a serious issue with someone, then you shouldn't have to lie about them in order to bring up that problem. But in most cases, it doesn't really seem like that's, that's what happens, in most cases. Yeah, uh, no, it's in, in most cases, the media do not correct themselves and don't have to because people can't afford to. And if they did once or twice because you sent them an email, that's very nice of them. But this doesn't usually happen. I'm, I'm in multiple cases with uh, media outlets right now. Uh, luckily, in some cases, I've been able to find lawyers that are willing to do it pro bono, which is not common at all. Um, but no, it's it's not simple, and I think anyone who does a little more surface level, a little more research than surface level would find that. Sorry, I'm just trying to find one really important article here. Okay, uh, here it out. Here it is. There's a guy named Molodinsky. There was a huge BuzzFeed article about it, and he's a Polish man who had a ton of articles wait, in the Metro, wait, even Daily the, Mail. Hold on, hold on. The example you brought up. Hold on. There is this major contemporaneous case, Destiny. There wasn't even much of a lie, and the kids still got settlements from multiple outlets. So first of all, getting a settlement is not the same as winning the case. Although we could say that, well, if they did settle, maybe they were going to win the case. This case, though, this was really, really, really bad. This may be, I could be wrong, I'm not a lawyer. This might be one of the few cases where you might be able to prove actual malice. Dude, the way that, was it CNN? The way that they edited these clips to make it seem like these high school kids basically like hunted down these poor, poor American Indians and were making fun of them and scoffing at them. Um, dude, 
CNN fucked up. This was cringe as fuck, okay? Because the actual story and all the footage was like the exact opposite. Well, are these guys Nation of Islam? I'm trying to remember. But like um, these, also, yeah, also this kid isn't a public figure. So it might be a different standard as well. Although I'm not sure if that counts as public figure or not. If he's reported under the media. I, I can't imagine you can just make someone a public figure. Uh, but like, yeah, like, I'm, I'm, oh, they might have been black Israelites. Sorry, yeah. I'm pretty sure the actual story was the exact opposite. Where these guys approached like the high school kids and shit. This kid is like 17. Um, this might have been one of the few cases this might have been one of the few cases where you could actually prove malice um with, with the way that this was reported holy shit this was so fucking cringe okay there were black israelites in the background but the old guy was a native american gotcha Ugh. abc that's a story that every time i argue with my mom i have to walk that's one of those that i have to walk back immediately not walk back but i was like yeah the media fucked up really big like this was basically like 100 percent media propaganda to like make white people look bad or whatever because that's basically what that was it was so cringe apologizes for australian navy ship twerking video after dancers alleged deceptive editing the, t the twerking yeah, dancing troupe who performed. They apologize, but what I'm saying is this deceptive. What's that? Has this spread? hold on, Lauren. This always happens. Wait, this always happens Lauren, when I talk to people and Lauren. they bring up these examples and I can't look them up right away. Thankfully, I have my chat here. But usually, when I, <laughs> Dude, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm listening to myself or Vosh or some like drip, drip, drip down, trickle down debate economics. I hear these examples and I can't look them up right away. Later, I'll go and I'll find out that. These were accounted for. These things were apologized for. No, These no, things my, were okay, amended. My, my point, but yes. I can't look, up, in, in many, look them up at the cases, moment. In some cases, the apology does happen, which, thank goodness, the unfortunate part is most people don't see the apology. <sighs> and I, I have experienced this so much in my personal life. Uh, I, I had a huge article. Oh, I think it was by The New Yorker. I don't want to... This is correct. My point was she's pretending the media just get away with outrageous lies and never has any consequences for it. This is not true. People get fired off for bad stories. That is true, especially over the Trump and the Russia stuff. There were like multiple people. There were heads that rolled over some of the bad reporting of that. That is true. Exactly say. I published all of the evidence of this, but they wrote an article alleging that I lied to individuals that I had in my movie Farmlands and I took advantage of them. And it was really awful. It, it made me look very, very bad. Now, I sent them proof that this was untrue. I sent them all the messages with this individual that was in the movie that showed that she was overjoyed by her portrayal. She was so excited to talk to us about the bar murders. She couldn't believe how much attention and joy she was getting from it. And the article just said the complete opposite. Uh, Ariel, her name was, sent me an apology and said, I'm so sorry, I can't believe I misreported this. Let's try to, let's try to fix this. So we went back and forth for a month emailing back and forth and they refused to put in the article that it was untrue and they even they said they would publish in letters to the editors my correction and they even inserted in my correction it is lauren's opinion that this is inaccurate all right it wasn't my opinion so it wasn't accurate they published the letters for the editor it was never seen by anyone the original article was never corrected it never went to print it was just on a random web page of the site you can never find the that's quote, what usually happens so I, I assume you're referencing the quote from the lady whose father was killed on that farm in south africa right Correct. From my understanding, the exact quote was that she felt exploited and that she hadn't been fully made aware of the purpose of the interview. She didn't know what your uh, goal was or what, what, why you were asking these questions. And when she found out, she felt like she'd been exploited. And that was the, right. that was the quote so we that sent, I saw. We sent all of the private messages talking to her, which she was fully aware of what the interview was for. She loved the portrayal. She thought it was all great. And we sent these to... Uh, the New Yorker, and they all apologized. They literally apologized to me for publishing what they had and not uh, fact-checking with me and said, yes, this was inaccurate, and then refused to publish the correction. They only published it on an unseen page Holy and said armada. it was my opinion rather than truth. Jesus. Okay. So that's, I mean, I can send you all the, I've uploaded it to my Facebook and Twitter before, but I can re-upload it after this or send it to you after this if you'd like. But that's what usually happens. Well, why, why did the lady say that she felt exploited then? That's a very good question, and I would love to see what the actual questions were from the journalist, because I have done interviews with journalists where they have taken quotes of mine completely out of context, completely out of entirely different conversations, and put them in place of a narrative they've written beforehand, and I wouldn't be surprised if that happened in this instance. Okay. Um, so what did you, what was the, um, uh, uh, the publication that you I said? Was making Oh, sir. I think it was the New Yorker. It was the New Yorker. 
Okay, I'm not seeing anything from the New Yorker here. Every article that came up when I looked up Lawrence Southern Christchurch. Um, also, be very, very, very careful. If you're going to start talking about somebody else's personal experience, I would never expect to be able to do this on the fly um, because they're just they're just gonna this is their lived experience. They're gonna know so much more about this than you will. Um, getting like stuck in this trap of trying to argue. So like before it was what, what her lawyers had emailed her about defamation. Now it's about like this particular thing where she's probably gone back and forth with a reporter about it. You, there's no way that on a single cursory Google search, you, even if they're lying about everything, you're not gonna be able to disprove it. Um, you gotta be really, 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 really careful. Donated money. I, all I see is the Christchurch gunman. Oh, sorry, sorry, I was talking about that South Africa one. Uh, that's that was in the Daily Dot and the Independent. No, not the. Oh, well, maybe they said it too, but oh, I can't remember what it's called. There was one other outlet that repeated it, and it was like direct. Oh, you know what? I've gotten emailed to my lawyer here. But the point, anyways, we're getting off topic. Can we finish the book here? Because the point I was making <laughs> is. Refocus. We can't have these nuanced conversations about politics until we deal with the people that are quite frankly controlling the narrative and controlling how people think, lying and misportraying and misdirecting Jesus Christ. what conversations the public should actually be having first. And until we hold these people to account, the public are going to be constantly pitted against each other, have people's views misportrayed to them, have people that are legit. I mean, look what happened to Bernie Sanders. There are so many people that are kind of the those who want to criticize the establishment that could get completely torn down by biased media Wait. that are not addressed. Hold on. It says here- Oh it's no, a, don't do it's this. A, it's a quote. So what you're referencing from the Daily Dot is a quote saying that he donated, the, the Christchurch shooter had donated to your media company. Why are you on this again? Company, oh God. Specifically to you. No, he said he donated to my media company and that is why he deleted the tweet. And even that isn't true, that he donated to a company I was affiliated with. The Rebel so Media the person, hosted the finance. Wait, so the, the, the Rebel Media, sorry. The person that the Daily Dot interviewed lied about you. It wasn't the Daily Dot lying about you. It was the New York Times writer. The, the Roos? It was the New York, it was the Kevin Roos. Kevin the Roos, ah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So they interviewed him and he lied about you. As far he as I'm aware, as far as I'm aware, to be fair. Thousands of retweets, yeah. Uh, anyways, so these are just these statements that keep going out are completely false and easy to debunk. No. But these publications, Sorry, I've, sent, I've sent the Daily Dog, I've sent all these people uh, to lawyers and asked about it. And they're like, there's no point. There's no point. The amount of time and the amount of money is not worth it and it's unlikely it, it's they'll just be able to say uh you know there was no malice behind it so it's fine yep. and they'll probably just ignore your messages i've sent tons of letters to outlets some i'm pursuing a bit harder than others and hopefully that will turn out but defamation cases can take years like seven years and lots yeah, of resources they can be, they can be drawn years, out but yeah. by that time yeah by that time people's reputations are ruined and i don't once again you guys might think this is just a right-wing issue, but this ruins lots of people's lives that are normal people that have no political affiliations. Typic and that's why I was bringing up that Polish photographer, mm -hmm. Molodinsky, who had all these stories in the Daily Mail and the Daily Dot published about him, saying he lied about his community, saying he lied about another couple, calling them drunkards that uh, were on a sleigh trying to, that were almost running people over. It's it's a long story. You'll have to go read okay. it. Um, I'll look into it. I, I, did, I did a video called Sainthood for Sale right. on it. And he didn't leave his house for over a year I, yeah. after the article was published because his community mm -hmm. hated him. He had to go to the doctors to get drugs I, 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 for I, mental health issues. Like it just Lauren. ruined his life. And the Lauren. prosecutors wouldn't even- Dude, do you think it. people's I, names I like that? I've talked about this issue a lot so before. Condescending. I think, uh, oh if anyone God. wants to learn more, there's actually a pretty good John Oliver segment about slap suits. He criticized, um, what was his name? Something Murray. He was the owner of a coal company. And when he criticized him, Murray levied a bunch of slap suits against him thinking that they could uh, drain all of his money and they wouldn't be able to afford to keep on defending against these bogus lawsuits. This kind of thing, Bob Murray, yes. This kind of thing does happen. Um, and, and there is worth in criticizing mainstream media and these large companies. I think the problem is our capitalist system, but I think we're ready to move on to the final letter. Are you ready, Lauren? All right, let's do it. All right. I'm excited. The last letter is X. This is a hard one. I was thinking like, oh, oh shit. What's she gonna- You're skipping over patriotism? Um, I mean, I'm excited for that. It, it depends on how much my main idea for patriotism isn't 
it isn't anything crazy. It's just, it, would you, hold on, I'll just ask you. Do you think if there's like a, a very, like a tyrant, that was another letter, if there is a tyrant in charge of your country, is it unpatriotic to say, criticize that tyrant or to burn your country's flag or to protest to try to make that country better? Is that unpatriotic? Well, th this was going to be my point, Maya. I was excited to talk about it because I actually think, arguably, throughout history, patriotism no! has been more Sorry. of a left-leaning thing than a right-leaning thing. I, of course, portray it in a neutral term, but, uh, you know, every single anti-government, anti, uh, like aristocrat movement has been had, has considered itself patriotic, whether it be the Risorgimento, probably pronounced that wrong, the Italian radical left-wing patriotic movement, which uh, was anti-Habsburg, anti-clerical, and if it happened today, we call it a post-colonial movement, the American Revolution, which of course, um, by the standards of the time, was going against the rule of a king uh, at a time where you know, absolute monarchy was a thing worldwide, and they were instituting a constitutional democracy, which was clearly so, a move to the left. The Viet Cong were explicitly patriots and nationalists, so, um, most liberation so, movements. So, what you're so saying I just is... wanted to make the point that patriotism is not some sort of relic from the right wing. So I didn't think... Yeah, so... I'm surprised you actually didn't have a problem and we didn't get into it, but uh, I guess you thought that... Yeah, so so what you're saying is, at least this is my opinion, you can correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. this is what I believe. I don't think patriotism has any uh, left-right political bias, personally. Um, it, it's It's more of a... What I'm really curious about is, is it unpatriotic to do something like burn the American flag? Would that be an unpatriotic action? I'd consider it unpatriotic, yeah, to burn the flag. Because, you know, the idea of patriotism is you love your country and the people in it, sometimes even over the government or the powers that be. It's about the people. And that flag, I'd like to think, is a symbol of the country and not necessarily the government. And that, that's been the case throughout all all of these revolutions in history. The revolutionaries, liberation movements have waved their country's flags at some points, even while opposing the current governments. So I do think it's unpatriotic to burn your flag. Purse, I completely disagree. I think that the fact that at least, I, I know you're Canadian living in Australia, but I'm American. Here in America, yeah. I think that burning the American flag is the, is most, the most patriotic, patriotic thing, thing you, can, thing you do. can do. Because we're in a very <laughs> privileged position where we have the right to criticize the government, which a lot of people in a lot of places in the world don't have the right to do. There How are laws against burning the flag in, in a lot of other countries. Our, our uh, veterans, our soldiers fought for our right to be able to criticize our government. And if that takes the form of our freedom of speech, our freedom of expression takes the form of burning the American flag because we want to make it, we want to make our country better and we are trying to uh, demonstrate where we feel like the country is right now and how it needs to be improved. I feel like that is the most patriotic thing that you can do. Burning the I, symbol I that represents your country. Own because the flag is supposed to be a, a symbol of the country, not necessarily the government of the day, as the flag stays the same throughout all of the governments. Well, the government so, runs the country. You know, it's, it's not... I, I don't think so. I think a country is the people in it, and the government are just some people we have put in as organizers that are supposed to be responsible to us and not the other way around. But when you're, this doesn't have to just be referring to the government. You can also be criticizing the culture of your country or behavior if, if or things flag, that are happening. If the flag were a symbol of just one government at the time, like they switched it and they're like, this is officially the flag of the Republicans. Uh, that would make sense. You know, if you went out- How many of these fleets do these guys have? Burning a mega flag, even if you were, that makes sense to me, but to burn the American flag just seems like a, a self- Even if you just, know. even if you were burning the American flag, just for fun, just because you were like, eh, I'm just gonna burn it. Okay, here you go. That action here, is my patriotic point, my point because, is, okay. I don't know, I, what, think, what I, think it's, I think it's unpatriotic and dumb. Burning the presidential effigy, an effigy of the president, that may be patriotic if the okay. president is being oppressive and horrible to the people, sure, but I, I disagree with you on the flag point. I, I All think right. that's, my, I my reasoning for why I think it's patriotic to burn the flag is because you're exercising a right that is pretty unique to Americans, where you are allowed to burn the symbol of your country, because there's a lot of people that don't have that right. And America's all about freedom, exercising that freedom to okay. do something. So if people go in the street and start yelling the N-word, is that patriotic because they're expressing their right to do it? And they're in America, and they have the right I mean, to do America that. Is don't America is speech, pretty so racist, so yeah, it could be pretty patriotic. I swear, that is patriotism to you. Uh, if if America to you is about racism, then yeah, that would probably be pretty patriotic. It's a subjective thing. Oh, 
oh, you think patriotism is oh, no. absolutely. Think it's Many people believe uh, that loving, criticizing you know, the government is unpatriotic. Patriotism is loving. I, this, it feels like a walk back when you start saying that like, I think that this is X. And then somebody starts to challenge you on it. And it's like, oh yeah, well, of course, anything can be X, X is subjective. That feels like a walk back to me. Like you're kind of like, you realize that like the point maybe isn't that good. And then you're like, oh, well, <clears throat> hold on one second. I need to rest real quick. Your, your country wanting the best for your country and the people in it. Because yeah. I would argue that that's That's most subjective. people's opinion word, on it. The word patriotism has a definition. The only thing that differs is how you think we should make the country so, better. And if you think that people, I, I don't think there's anyone, I mean, maybe, <laughs> I don't think there's anyone that thinks they're making the country better by uh, yelling the N word in a public square to rile people up. What is what is better is subjective. People who want who wish slavery would come back believe that they're not being slavery is unpatriotic. So of course, if somebody right. believes that, they'd be going out in the street yelling the I, N word. You know, maybe, maybe I just disagree with you because I don't think either of those things make the country better. But I, I would you agree that at least the definition of patriotism is wanting to wanting the best for your country and wanting it to be a better place. And this is why, in some instances, yeah, I agree with I that definition. Consider Black Lives Matter activists if they truly think you know pursuing patriotic the reform yeah. of the police is going to make the country better. They they can absolutely be patriots too. Okay, yeah, we don't we don't disagree there. But I I believe that like <laughs> criticizing your ability to have like freedom of speech, for example, criticizing the state of the country, the culture of the country, all of that is patriotic because one of the core, the num the first amendment is about having the right to do that, to even criticize your right. The first amendment grants you the right to criticize having the right to criticize the first amendment. You can go back as far as you want with that one. No, I, I believe I, that's I, patriotic. You know, I, like I don't, I don't disagree with you that you should, you know, I know some people disagree with me on the right, but sure, I, I don't think you should be, tackled and have a, a be pepper sprayed or put in jail for burning the flag or criticizing okay. the country. I don't think that. Because I, I know um, a lot of people who do believe that, but I I'm glad don't, you don't. I, I, I would disagree with someone who argued that was improving the country. That's where I would go. Especially if, because I've, I've also made the argument before that, you know, sometimes you have to be a friend's offensive to make critiques of the powers that be and some of the social systems that's, that be. That's been the basis of a lot of my political activism historically. And so I definitely wouldn't disagree with you there that sometimes you do have to be offensive to criticize the powers that be. I just would disagree that there's like, I, I, I don't think the burning the flag is making that much of a point anymore since people have done it so much and it's really not owning anyone anymore except yeah. for maybe their own image of I'm glad. Doing, I'm glad. Like, working towards. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm glad that the the burning the flag thing isn't a very currently relevant thing going on in in politics. It's not like part of the culture war narrative. Yeah, at the that's moment. what I mean. <laughs> it, it does seem like these issues. Like back in, I remember back in 2016, everybody was was arguing over the um, the right to burn the American flag. Okay. But are you ready for X? This is. I was. Right. I was thinking. How are you gonna. Ma how are you gonna rhyme X? There are not a lot of words that start with X. However. <laughs> yeah. I was. Go out of the box. I, I was really surprised when I saw X is for Xander Hall. I was pretty surprised. I didn't know that you were so aware of me. Um, no, but X. Yeah, you're welcome. X is for I'm censorship. So happy you got a copy and saw it. Yeah. <laughs> X is for censorship. Xenial, Zulos, I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Xylophone and, or Xenon. There are, there are so many ways I, or, God, I'm, I'm already flustered. There are so many God, words I could lean on. X isn't only a letter though. It can be very dangerous, so you should know. X is the symbol of censorship. Free speech and thought are what that t seeks to trip. Or to strip? Eh, I can't read. Censorship's dangers are vital to know because XXXXX, about as ironically as many times uh, as my name has letters, so that could just be censoring Xander Hall. Um, that's my headcanon. Those because X's are censoring Xander my name. Hall. That's why it's dangerous. Because yeah. Xander Hall. Oh. Are you getting curious what's blocked by that X? Sorry, they censored that part of the text. You'll never know what it said or might say. This is why censorship's never okay. So we're gonna do a bit of a, um... Okay. Of all the fucking letters that he brought up, okay? This is the one where I think you can legitimately say, why the fuck would you have this in a kid's book? Because even you yourself have said that you think that transgenderism is something that should be kept out of the classroom. Isn't that kind of like a form of censorship? Like, if we ever believed in censorship in society, shouldn't it be around our kids? Like, 
Do you want children to watch pornography? Probably not. Isn't that kind of a form of censorship? This should be the one area, I think, where we can find like a slam dunk. Like, this is like oddly political for children. Like, I don't know. Now my kid's only 10, maybe he's dumber than the average 10 year old. I don't have very many talks with Nathan about political censorship. It's not a topic he's like very woke or well read on. Um, but we'll, let's see, here we go. What's that one YouTube channel where they ask like the rapper, they like play a bit of the rapper's lyrics and they're like, okay, so what were you thinking? What did you mean by that? What were you thinking? Uh, I forget what it's called. It's like um, genius, yeah. So what, what, what were you thinking when, when you came up with those bars? Well, let me tell you. Now, generally, I think that censorship is not a great idea. I think throughout history, it has been used to uh, shut down dissident voices. It's been used to shut down criticisms of tyrannical governments. It's been used to shut up voices that we really need to hear all sorts of perspectives, whether left or right. And as a general rule, I don't think it's a good thing. I'm sure you're gonna sit here and try to pull up the exceptions Try to see if you can get me on one of those, but once again, it's a kid's book, not a political Yeah, but again. Book. It's uh, um, a general rule. I, I, I actually just have questions, not really much to argue. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious, what is your definition of censorship? Like, how broad is it? Well, the shutdown, especially on a political level, legal level, of people's uh, First Amendment rights being able to have a conversation, being, and, and even on a private level, I would argue that I have problems with uh, corporations that are supposed to be platforms for free speech, like Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube that have claimed publicly, you know, we want people to have open debate, shutting people up because they are criticizing authorities or shutting people up because they uh, have opinions that aren't necessarily PC um, deemed to be within the status quo. So just this morning, with no explanation, James O'Keefe lost his Twitter account because he's been putting out leaks of CNN saying they deliberately tried to sway the election using propaganda. God, I don't think Xander Hall's familiar enough with it. This would be, if you wanted to have a slightly more aggressive conversation, I think I could bring this up in a friendly manner. You wanna talk about slander and you wanna talk about defamation and bad fucking claims, and then you're gonna come out and defend O'Keefe? Come on. No way, Jose. Not a good look for you. There have been so many blatant misrepresentations of truth by O'Keefe that we can all watch videos about. I feel like that's like a slam dunker there. Like, come on, how are you gonna defend him? I think that's really worthy to talk about, whether our media are unbiased or whether they are deliberately trying to influence us in political ways and his account was shut down. Now we haven't really been given an explanation for that yet. Maybe it was because there's a legal suit behind it. I don't know, maybe there's an explanation, but if there's not, I think that's a very wrong thing to do and very dangerous because then people can't see critiques of authority and genuine wrongdoing. So you bring up a lot of examples. So I want to make sure I got ahead, ahead on this one just because I'm, I'm a very curious boy. I like learning about things. And it seems like the reason that Twitter banned uh, James O'Keefe was for violating its platform manipulation and spam policy. I guess what he did was he had multiple accounts going and he was making sock accounts. Well, I'll have to see proof for that because I doubt that's uh, necessary. How are you going to see proof of that? Sends out, like, when he comes out with his videos, he'll... DM people, including me, and say, hey, do you want to share this? I I don't think he that would be necessary, but if it is, then fair enough. You know, if someone's genuinely violated the terms of service oh, and someone's that, genuinely done something wrong, I am against that. But, you know, you see, and I think that censorship can happen no, in lots this. of different Dumb ways fuck. as well, and you see it... Okay, sorry, I'm, I'm getting into a bit of a, a rant here, but... The point is, like historically, when people have been told, no, you're not allowed to criticize the church or we're going to burn you at a stake. No, uh, we are going to arrest you if you have socialist opinions. No, we are going to um, arrest you if you have nationalist opinions or if you used to speak out against Stalin, we're gonna just put you in front of a firing squad. That kind of censorship will just keep it basic like there because we can get into all the convoluted stuff happening today with big tech, but that basis, that's what I'm talking about, is, you know, genuine oppression and government shutting up and censoring genuine critiques and genuine questions and concerns about 
powers that be. Okay, so you, you're cool with like TOS or like, um, are you cool with like Twitter TOS? Like if someone breaks the TOS that you agree to, um, then someone getting banned, that's completely okay? Depends what the TOS is and also depends how it's being applied. For example, you see on YouTube, okay, they've got the TOS where you can't, you can't talk about shootings and violence and this kind of stuff or you'll be demonetized. And I think that to an extent is a type of censorship saying we're going to take away your income if you speak about certain issues. And um, you saw what happened is lots of people who ended up talking about mass shootings, such as Casey Neistat, even just fundraising for it, had strikes on their channels and were demonetized. I did too. But for some reason, mainstream figures. Oh my God. I had this idea yesterday, guys. Holy shit. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I have to interrupt this for a second. Do you think it would be possible? So we tried the canvassing thing, okay? We've tried other shit, okay? Do you think it's be, po it'd be possible that we could fundraise money for studies? Like, could we find a group of researchers and say like, hey, we'll fundraise like $20,000. Like, can you guys do like a study on the effects of like minimum wage or rent control? I wonder how much it costs to commission a study. I don't want to like start like a think tank or anything like that because those always get accused of being biased. But do you think you could ever approach like researchers at like University of California or the university and it's just like, hey, like you guys need money to do research. Like, can you guys do like, can we commission a study on like this effect here? I wonder how much money that would cost. Yeah, you'd kind of be like creating like a grant or whatever. I think that's a fuck ton of money. I mean, it would depend on the type of study, right? Like medical shit is gonna be millions, hundreds of millions of dollars, but like, um, well, I don't know. I'm super curious. I can't remember what his name, one of the hosts of The Tonight Show could do a huge monologue on shootings and remain monetized, which makes you wonder, is this, once again, one of these classism problems where you have an elite class all protecting each other and all allowing each other to talk and say certain things and have certain conversations, but if the lower class, the people that aren't in the inn, talk about it, they'll be demonetized and have their income taken away. All right. Because they want to control the narrative and they want to control the wealth. And I think how those TOS are applied, we all know are not applied fairly. We've seen it before time and time again, and that's worth critiquing and worth talking about. All right. I am someone who, who does a lot of studying into YouTube's algorithm and how the behind the scenes works with it. And uh -huh. I can assure you that that is not a, most likely not some bias against smaller creators. What seems to occur is the reason why a lot Wait, of- Wait, let's see if he gets this right. So the actual, the real answer to this is most likely people that have high level channels belong to high level multi-content networks. I think MCNs are what they're called. There's a, I don't know if it's multi-content, multiple channel network. There's a name for MCN. I don't remember. Um, but like, they belong to these networks that get them individuals that work in these companies that have multi-channel networks. I mean, that have like closer connections to actual like YouTube or Google staff. And then you're able to like expedite your issues if you're having problems. So instead of like sending in a random support ticket, I can talk to like one of the guys that works for my MCM and be like, yo, my channel got fucked for this. Can you talk to your guy at YouTube and figure it out? That's, that's usually why these channels get expedited support tickets and get issues resolved in like unique ways. Of my content, about 90% of it maybe is demonetized. Or not demonetized, but like yellow dollar sign or red dollar sign. I very rarely get the green. I get like a lucky two or three green dollar signs in a row and it's a really good day, I, I smile. Um, the reason why this tends to happen is the, the reason why YouTube implemented their demonetization policy was to help them keep ads on the platform. A lot of people rely on YouTube in order to make a living. And most people on YouTube aren't making content that's, you know, controversial. Most people are Minecraft Let's Players or vloggers or people doing stuff that advertisers aren't going to have an issue with. But when you have hardcore political topics, currently happening events being discussed, advertisers get really iffy about that and they get really mad if, it, if they find out their ads are playing on something they don't want it to play on because that could get their company in trouble. This is just a symptom of capitalism. So YouTube's in a position where protect their income and the income of their creators. You have a missile rack mod? A system of course. That those advertisers <laughs> and I've got the specialization. It allows them to grade that on my content character. be like, okay, is this too, too yikes? Because Destiny for pilots this shit, baby. All right, there we go. Sorry. Now YouTube's a very big platform. A lot of people make content on it. Most, to the in the grand scheme of things, nobodies. Right. I'm a nobody compared to Jimmy Fallon or John Oliver. Um, most of these 
of people like us cannot be graded on an individual level by YouTube. Maybe we'll get lucky, and if we submit a regrade of our videos, a review, then maybe we'll get the green dollar sign, or they'll, an actual person will review it more closely. But that usually can't be done. But someone like John Oliver, Jimmy Fallon, larger figures that have a larger media presence, Typically, YouTube can trust them not to break their TOS or do anything that advertisers would get mad about because they run on TV and they get advertisements there all the time. So okay. this is more so. of a of a capitalism problem. You also, depending, I don't know if YouTube still does this or not, but depending on the size of the MCMs, they used to be called something different back in the day. I think they did. But depending on the size of the MCM, you can also, I think, sell your own ads against the platform too. Um, I don't know if they still do this, but like I'm pretty sure that way, way, way back in the day, um, you could actually have like you own an MCN and then you get like unique advertisements that are sold just to the channels that are being managed out of your thing. So you have like a different relationship with those advertisers as well. Then a elite is keeping the, the little guy down problem. I normally I would agree with you and I think you are making a valid point here. But it doesn't explain people like Shoe on Head, for example, who just put out a video on Hell World or whatever, mm -hmm. and she got demonetized, completely not getting any profit from it, and yet YouTube is still playing ads on her videos. So they're literally just... So when you get demonetized, um, what happens is, is you personally don't make... No, hold on, fuck, let me think. Okay, you get demonetized. Okay, this is a little complicated. If you get demonetized because there's like a policy violation or something related to that on YouTube, fuck, there's like 20 different things that can happen. Okay, hold on, let me, wait, let me write all these down, hold on. No, 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 we should be able to drink this out. Okay, several things can happen to your video. If it's like super offensive and, it, and so either one, you can get a community strike, which means the video is just removed, or two, it might be a certain edgy topic and what happens is, is YouTube will limit the ads that can run on this video, meaning that advertisements can still be run, but they'll be incredibly limited. I don't know if you get paid for that or not. I think you still get paid for that. There's another form of demonetization though, where you will get quote unquote demonetized because you hit like a copyright, um, like um, part of the um, copyright ID system. So your video gets demonetized, you don't make money, but YouTube will still run ads because who's ever claimed your video is making money off of it as well. Um, it, it just, it depends on what exactly is going on. People use like demonetize to describe, like it could be like five or six different things that happens, it just depends. But if, if their video genuinely got demonetized because it was like bad content or whatever, or like offensive content, um, I, I don't think that YouTube, there might be some limited ads that run on those videos, but it comes from a much smaller pool. Um, yeah, but, it, but if you get, um, there's a difference between being demonetized and having your videos being deemed not safe for advertisers. Yeah, kind of. Well, it depends. I mean, it can all be demonetized to you. But if like a copyright ID claims your video, you will get quote unquote, I think you still get the red dollar sign. You get demonetized, but they're still running normal ads against it. It's just that that revenue is being claimed by another company. But if you run into like a, a uh, like an edgy material warning or whatever, I forget what they call it. You'll get a notification saying limited ads are running on this video. And I think you even get like a notice when you try to click those videos on YouTube. It'll say like, oh, you need to sign in to view this 18 or older or whatever. And that's drawn from a much smaller smaller pool but sorry okay taking away the income of smaller creators that may compete with larger mainstream outlets while still making money off them and while still keeping advertisers on their videos I'm so pretty sure like that still doesn't add up with the argument you're making here which I don't entirely disagree with and think is a valid analysis I forget what his name was but I know there was a youtuber that does like deep dives into the YouTube algorithm and how to break it talked about this problem and how it was a glitch because this guy does like deep dives into the YouTube algorithm but from my understanding the reason why shoe on heads and I love shoe on it me, me and our friends I love her videos on on uh, hell world they're very good videos um, the most recent one that she uploaded discussed a lot of stuff that's going on right now that's obviously not advertiser friendly. That's easily gonna get demonetized or at least the yellow dollar sign. Um, and she probably knew that going in. As for ads playing on the video anyway, from my understanding, that was a glitch. It's a convenient glitch for YouTube, but nonetheless, from the experts yeah. that I've that I've seen that like built their entire channels and investigating the YouTube algorithm and how to exploit it, they've said it is also a glitch. So, right. great, okay. yeah. But even, even the point you've made there, which is they can trust these mainstream media outlets more and know that they're gonna be more safe with advertisers, that's still a continuation of implementing and supporting the class system that tries to prevent, you know, poor, lower class, smaller creators from breaking into the big time and making money off doing it. And I think that needs to be questioned and that needs to be challenged. That's kind and of I true. Also, 
you know, I think- Remember, okay, left-leaning people don't like to talk about this, but all forms of regulation will almost always disproportionately impact smaller channels. Whether you're talking regulation, whether you're talking preferential treatment, whether you're whatever, like generally smaller people get hurt by this more than larger people. So like in the case of YouTube, like having direct contacts to YouTube or being part of an MCN or blah, 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 like this form of treatment will always like favor like larger people. And the way that YouTube like implements its TOS, when anything like when stricter guidelines are released, it's probably gonna hurt like smaller people that don't have access to these large MCNs more than the larger people. Most people would agree, left wing or right wing, whatever their views may be, that we have seen over time the TOS not applied properly. We have seen it unfairly applied. And if if I'm wrong, if the TOS is never being misused, if it's always correct, uh, maybe I maybe I am wrong. I don't know. I don't think I am though. <laughs> sure, Why TOS single... can never be applied completely equally until we have a like with Twitter, YouTube, all these systems. These are all run by algorithms and bots. Um, typically, unless how did it's it retreat? A it's a freighter. Attention, there is no way that YouTube is able to go over the, I think it's like 4 million hours of footage are uploaded to YouTube every day. It's something insane. Same goes for Twitter. Like millions upon yeah. millions upon millions of tweets being uploaded every day. This is all done by robots and robots. Maybe sometime in the future when we have ultra high advanced quantum computing, maybe then they'll be able to perfectly apply TOS. Right now, that's not always going to be the case. The people that are going to have direct action done upon them by the company uh, that runs whatever platform, getting banned or getting unbanned, it's typically going to be done when it drums up a large media uh, uh, frenzy about it, right? Like if it gets trending on Twitter um, that someone was falsely taken down. I mean, I, I'm pretty close to the YouTube drama community. I've, I've sort of made friends with a lot of those people. There are completely apolitical YouTubers that get falsely striked down all the time for no reason whatsoever, and they get brought back when enough people on Twitter fuss, make a big fuss about it and at YouTube. I don't think this is so much a deliberate agenda by like the elites or whatever. I think this has to do with the incompetent, with the incompetence of a company that has no other way of like regulating this massive platform and how many people use it. I think that's part of it. And I won't discount that at all because I do think that um, that's an absolutely fair analysis. But we've also like we've observed on a large level where, you know, they would have individually analyzed both because they're big figures. This this hypocrisy and not applying things uh, evenly taking place. Like with Donald Trump, when he was taken off Twitter and every platform, even he was even take off, taken off Pinterest as if Trump's sitting there with pin boards, making up how he's gonna arrange his floral, you know, arrangements in his house. But what is it with these lefties and just accepting shoe on head? They don't seem to do the same for people like Chris Reagan. Are they just coomers? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's like an attractive girl. She is, she's very attractive, wants to talk about politics and meme with you or whatever. Um, I think she has a huge edge in like making inroads with other people. Lauren Southern could probably do the same if she moderated her politics a bit too, although it's harder for her since she was almost like basically literally a fucking Nazi a few years ago. But, but um, why was Trump banned? I saw him banned. I, I, he, he was banned because they alleged that he was promoting rioting and they alleged that he was promoting, you know, uh, an insurrection, even though he tweeted, he tweeted something that, you know, some people would interpret as, well, I guess this is what happens when you rig an election and for acute for saying that the election was rigged. Um, and also, even though he posted after, go home in peace and don't behave this way. But we know for ages, Tons of Democrats have accused the Russians of stealing elections. They've accused Trump of Why being they... an invalid president. We've seen Ka Colin no. Kaepernick come out and say, support rioting and not get banned off Twitter. So this has been an uneat, like this, this application of banning people for a, p apparently or potentially supporting riots and for saying elections are rigged. It's only used one way very often. Lauren, you... I didn't see a single person being banned for saying Russians stole the election. So Lauren, you've, Lauren, I have bad news. Lauren, you, have, you have stepped Lauren. on my trap card. Oh God. So okay. Trump's Why? banning was because for one, he alleged that the, he repeatedly over the course, a long period of time, alleged that he won the election. Not that, oh, something might've happened, that he won the election, the Democrats stole it, it was illegal. And he, when his right, when he said, stand back and stand by, you can interpret that however you like. But even once this insurrection happened at the Capitol, he said, you're very special. I appreciate that you did this, but this is what happens when you steal the election. This is why he got banned. A lot of people saw it. He obviously that's, broke that's tons of other TOS. What I mm -hmm. said. All, on top I agree, of that, I agree with you. on top of that, um, the uh, what was the other thing that you brought up after the Trump thing? 
Uh, I said stolen election and riot. Ah, yes. Mentioned both the things you're mentioning so, slightly differently. So, so you <laughs> argued that it was slanderous for the uh, the Democrats to argue, or for like the mainstream media Democrats. I didn't say slanderous. People. I said they. Too or it was the same thing. It was comparable. Said elections were illegitimate, the, which is why people are getting banned for saying the election results they in, were illegitimate. They totally different this. types of claims. Side, they investigated this, and they. This is like the meme that never dies with conservatives. When Democrats say that like there was malfeasance in the election, or at least my understanding is no mainstream Democrat came out and said like the actual polls themselves, the actual vote tallies themselves were rigged. It's more that there was like undue influence by foreign powers, namely Russia. That's a far different claim than saying the election itself, the vote totals were actually rigged. Uh, unless there, maybe there were some Democrats that were saying that, but I didn't see very many mainstream Democrats say anything like that. Found that Russia gate. Do you think that when people describe you as a deb debate bro, it creates an image of someone like this in their head? Yeah, I get described as a debate bro, but I think that I'm generally like pretty chill in most of my conversations. My earlier conversations, maybe from four years ago, might have been more like debate bro y for sure, but I think I'm like pretty chill. It's very rare that I'll like source, 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 or anything like that. Destin, you're gonna lose a few ships to this. Bro, <laughs> I'm in the motherfucking onslaught, okay? I don't lose shit to these shit stations anymore. I'm a fucking god, okay? I'm a warrior in this shit. Fuck you. Okay, sorry. It wasn't Trump colluding, but it was Trump's administration and the Republican Party colluded with Russia to leak those things about the Democrats to help him in the election. There was collusion found. There were prosecutions that so happened before, over this. So the court wait, documents wait, are completely before, available. Wait, okay, so I, I completely disagree with that analysis of the whole report, but way before that, before there was any, any investigations and any conclusion to investigations, people were saying Russians stole the election and they weren't getting banned. Because it had already been found that the Russians were paying for ads on on no, things like, oh, uh, no, Facebook, you gotta... that the Russians were working to help get Trump elected. Okay, okay, so, okay. That had already been Great. found. So now we've so now we've discovered the collusion was the part working. that had to be proven. So now we were dis now we've discovered that CNN was working to get Biden into office. Is that election stolen? No. Can I now what? say the election was stolen by CNN and not get banned? Did CNN hack the RNC to to leak information about Trump? No, they said they controlled the minds of the people with propaganda to try to get Trump out of office. Can I say that the election was stolen by CNN now without getting banned? I don't think that's I comparable, no. That? I don't think that's comparable to leaking you know, so, information so from the party. you're saying that because Russians bought bots to spread information, that's stealing an election, but I can't say when so CNN openly says- The reason why you heard people one say- one of the largest platforms in America to try to spread propaganda to get Trump the reason, out of office, the, that isn't the same. The reason why you heard random libs on Twitter saying that the election was hacked by uh, by the Russians was because it had already been revealed that the Russians were spreading misinformation on platforms to try to get Trump elected. That's where that came from. The Democrats did not try to overturn the election. It was nowhere near comparable to what the Republicans did after Biden won the election. And the reason why now Russiagate ended up being true was because after all the investigations, they found that yes, Trump's administration, the Republican Party, worked with the Russians to hack the DNC and spread that uh, spread that stuff, the emails about Hillary to help get work with the Russians to hack the DNC. I don't know if I say that. Get Trump elected. That's what was found. I don't there know how familiar Lawrence Russia. Southern is with this stuff Trump though, so he might get away with that one. Fair. That's why Trump didn't get uh, in any trouble legally for it. However, people in Trump's administration- Wait, the reason why Trump didn't get any trouble legally for it is because I think that Mueller specifically said it wasn't up, there isn't, collusion isn't a crime. That's not what, there is no such thing as collusion as a crime. They were looking for conspiracy. And I think Mueller said that the, the level of their investigation, that wasn't something that they felt like they could adequately prove at the time. And people that Trump worked with did because there was collusion, it was found. The court documents are there. You can look okay, them up. Let me ask you. How much money did, uh, do you know how much money the Russians spent on ads? I have no clue. No, not off the top of my head. Okay, it wasn't even a fraction, not even a slight fraction of what Biden spent on the election or even what That's, CNN who cares? would spend on a couple days of media. They spent $100,000 on Facebook ads. And you're trying to allege that that's comparable to CNN spending four years of primetime TV trying to get their candidate elected? That's, Wait, not, why that's are you not going, even remotely comparable. Why are you going back to the people? I'm not talking about C... Holy shit, I'm sorry. I'm getting a little bit frustrated, but I'm gonna try to keep my... I'm gonna try to keep my cool, okay? <laughs> why do you keep going back to comparing what came out from the Mueller investigation and Mueller. the... 
numerous investigations that were done by the U.S. government to find out whether or not there was collusion between Trump's administration, his um, and his elect. You just the election admitted election. there was no collusion between Trump and the Russians. You were saying Trump's you administration, said that. Trump's administration, and his um, his uh, uh, his like running party. So, like, what was the exact thing that uh, the Russians did that won Trump the election? The Republican Party and Trump's administration, not Trump, people in Trump's administration worked with the Russians to hack the DNC to leak those emails from Hillary's private server. So Hillary was doing illegal things and that got exposed. That's still and collusion with the Russians. That's where the, the collusion thing came from. Okay, so Hillary was. Wait, doing we're not. I'm not trying to argue in exposed. favor of Hillary here. I, the election was like back in 2016. I'm not trying to argue that. That's collusion. So you're saying people having access to more information, real legitimate information about what the other candidate was doing, won Trump the election? Okay. <laughs> Wait, people went to jail for for colluding with the Russians okay. for this. We we're colluding okay. with an enemy country to hack into a a a, a government party in our country. Did anyone go to jail for collusion? Oh God, I don't even remember. Manafort went to jail because of stuff related to bad reports to the State Department, which he should have. Manafort got fucked, rightfully so. Um, let's see. Why did Stone go? Was it for lying to the the fuck? I forget all these charges. I don't think anybody. I don't think anybody went to jail for quote unquote collusion. Um, like I said before, collu collusion isn't a, a crime. You, it's not a crime. Um, I, I think that you can you can get people in like conspiracy to do things that are bad, but th like I don't. There's not conspiracy for collusion. Like th it's just not a crime. That it's just not a crime. It's not a thing. Um, I'd have to go back and look. I don't remember. It's been so long since I've debated the Russian shit, but. country well, like it's not our country but in america an enemy country they colluded with another country this is treason to leak information on another party that's where russia gate came from that was what came of it there there were convictions you can look it up the court documents are public there's some redacted stuff because for for national security but it is completely available there this isn't a secret okay fine and it's also not a secret that and, and that's why i actually i don't think that people should have been banned. I'm not arguing that people should have been banned from Twitter or Facebook for talking about Russian collusion. I have never argued that once. You guys on the progressive side of things, Democrats, big tech are arguing that people shouldn't be allowed to talk about potential problems with the election that Biden won. No one has argued that people should be censored for talking about potential collusion with the Trump Hillary election. It's only one side arguing there should be censorship. Well, I'm saying there is legitimate information showing CNN colluded to try to get Trump out of office, and you're not taking any of that seriously, my, and you are still supporting censorship of people who want to talk my, about it. My concern is not There is a... I wonder if it would be illegal for CNN to do what Russia did. So to be clear, when it came to the Internet Research Agency, what the indictments were for, I believe, was not... Oh, I shouldn't quote... I'm too lazy to look it up. Somebody go look it up. I can tell you what happened. I don't remember what the actual indictments were for. But what happened was a fake U.S. company was set up that was a front that was Russian people were paying people to do political ads in the United States, but they misrepresented themselves as domestic agents when they were actually foreign agents. This was That was the crime. The Internet... The IRA... A, I think it was the IRA is what they call themselves, the Internet Research Agency, those, those indictments had to do with the fact that they lied about being foreign entities. If CNN wants to do, like, advertising or whatever, they can do that. But I, I'm, I could be wrong, but I'm guessing if CNN were to misrepresent itself and lie about starting a company or whatever, you'd probably get in trouble for filings or something. I don't know. But, um, yeah, like, that, that was the issue. It wasn't just that, like, Russia is advertising or Russia's. It's that they created these fake companies to, to push propaganda and they lied about it. They didn't. Because I think that when you do that as a foreign agent, especially, one, I'm not sure if you're allowed to do that regarding politics, but two, there are, there are filings you have to make with the State Department to, like, show that you're, like, an authentic person and all that shit. People who want to talk about it, I'm talking about it right now. My problem is when people deliberately spread misinformation. There were people on the right, on these platforms, that were saying the election was stolen. There was no evidence, no concrete evidence whatsoever that's been found that hasn't been debunked about there being... I run political campaigns on Facebook as a tiny shit stained small company. We ran 100k in Facebook ads in one week sometimes. Um, the effect of the Russian ads was virtually nothing in the scheme of things. First of all, the budget wasn't the problem. The problem was the scope of some of these things. So, for instance, I believe... Was it the GOP Tennessee account? One of these accounts was just a fake account ran by Russians. And I think it was called, can somebody tell me what it was? It was like GOP underscore Tennessee. 
right? Like people thought this was an official GOP account. It was just like ran by Russians. Um, maybe somebody here will know more specifically. Um, but it wasn't. It, it was. It wasn't just the. Um, it wasn't just about the money spent. Also, a tiny shit stained small company. If you're running a hundred thousand dollars in Facebook ads in a single week, I don't think that you're a tiny shit stained small company. That's a pretty hefty fucking advertising budget. A hundred thousand dollars in one fucking week. Or I don't know. I don't know what you mean when you say small company, but that the Democrats stole the election, that Biden stole the election. There is no evidence whatsoever. It is completely unsubstantiated. And that rhetoric goaded conservatives into doing what they did on, at the Capitol um, on the okay, 6th. So you don't think rhetoric of saying that Trump stole the election and that it was all the Russians that did it, which I do not agree. I don't think it was all. I don't think it was all the Russians, the but I think I they. Think that, uh, you don't think that rhetoric can cause riots and cause disorder, which it did. I was there. I was at the riots that occurred and mm -hmm. destroyed massive areas of D.C. Which, wait, what? Wait, what? I'm, maybe I missed this? What D.C. huge riots were there that caused mass destruction over the Russia stuff? Did this happen? I know that there have been some big ones for BLM. Were there for the Russia stuff? Do I just not remember this? I know that on election day there were a few, like, protests and maybe even some but were there really big ones i'm trying to she's talking about the capital riots wait like in 2021 like the most recent shit or or in 2016 i'm trying to think if like there was like big damage that happened over this Okay, protests occurred in Oakland, California against the election of Donald Trump. While originally peaceful, these protests became violent. Protesters lighting trash cans and cars and a building on fire. Okay, so there was a riot in Oakland. Thirty people got arrested. Three people were injured. Okay, not good. There shouldn't be right, but like, this is not even remotely close to the scale of like the other capital riots or anything, right? Also, I don't know if these people were protesting because of Russia or just because they fucking hated Trump. <laughs> also in D.C.? Were, were there, like, riots in D.C. too that caused damage? When I think of riot, I usually think of, like, violence or damage being caused, not just... Why are you tracking me? Look at your disgustingly small fleet compared to the size of my fleet. You fucking child. We're gonna annihilate you. Space ISIS. When Trump went into office on his uh, inauguration, and surprisingly, no one talked about that much. And the problem, the problem I don't have with it. I, I don't have. A but problem the difference is that the left was right. Misinformation. I don't have a problem with. Dumb oh, fuck. so the left were right to do that. They were right to destroy. No, they were see and destroy people's businesses. They were right about Russian collusion. No. <sighs> this. Okay, so why are we talking about this? What happened to the book? Banned right away before any investigation had properly taken place and you know what it looks like that it looks like trump supporters you know, were right that there was some form of rigging as well which is with cnn propaganda that's not the that's same not thing what at rigging all. is oh you, we're talking about collusion okay, not rigging. So, no when it comes when it comes to okay, nobody so, no, argued no, no. nobody were, argued the election was rigged the russians stole no, the election nobody there were, there were nobody, the nobody with any the nobody with any credibility argued that the russians hacked into the election did, like for sure nobody argued that there were like random people right. on twitter and facebook but we're talking about something care. that was confirmed by an investigation about, by the I government about, and something with no there evidence is an ins inconsistent application of the tos and we know that they say they ban people for talking about people stealing elections when they are and they talk they say they ban people when they talk about starting violence Let's look at a more solid example here instead of arguing the nuances of the Mueller report. Kaepernick, Colin Kaepernick, mm -hmm. directly supported a revolution and violence against the government and has not been banned from Twitter. So you can when agree did, what did Kaepernick with the support say? of that revolution. You can agree with the support of that violence, but that still points out the what I'm saying here, which is there is an inconsistent application of the TOS. So Colin Kaepernick's statement was, when civility leads to death, revolting is the only logical reaction. He said on Instagram and Twitter, the cries for peace will drain, will rain down, and when they do, they will land on deaf ears because your violence has brought this resistance. Wait. That's almost Listen, okay? 
This is why we were in the... Now we've we've left whatever arc I was on before where I was being too nice, even though people still said it was mean, okay? This is why we're on the full fuck socialist arc. He should have been banned for that, okay? That shit is cringe as fuck. The guillotining people, the calling for violence, and the de the blood in the street, don't do it, okay? Whoever you are, don't fucking do it. Don't do it. That's fucking cringe, okay? If Kaepernick really tweeted that as he just read it, then yeah. You know what? He should have hit it, got a ban for that. Fuck you, all right? If, not, if I'm not allowed to talk about bombing my ISP in a video game, fuck you. You can't talk for shit like that identical to what Trump was saying. That's not even close to what Trump was saying. Trump was saying, well... Oh. Ka what Kaepernick said was arguably as a single statement was more aggressive than what Trump was saying, but in the totality of Trump's rhetoric, I think Trump's was worse, obviously. The only thing is he's directly saying we have to fight back, where Trump was saying this is what happens when you rig an election. And once again, people would disagree that civility leads to death. And people would disagree with Trump that the election was rigged. Wait, so you think that him saying that people fighting for civil rights and Trump lying about the election being stolen because he's salty, and then, th then those people proceeding to go to the Capitol and try to break in, which, by the way, they're all getting arrested. Their, their identities are being collected by the government. But they're being it's crazy arrested. To me that they're Do you think these are comparable? Well, there's current rioting going on in Portland. And of course they're focusing on that. Wait, got, those it was people, an insurrection attempt. People, Wait, people got, liter people got arrested for a lot of the riots going on and the other stuff, though, right? We literally saw videos of people getting so asked because people were getting dragged off and arrested for it. Well, actually, can we look up? What, like, how many people were arrested over, like, the riots for the BLM shit? I'm pretty sure there were quite a few. However, that is on a way different level than breaking into the goddamn Capitol building, obviously. What the fuck are you thinking? Who are you? You guys are cringe. Look at these, this collection of garbage. Why do you even think you can, what do you want to talk about? Submit rip. okay, whatever. Taken over dozens of federal buildings over the last year who created their own autonomous radical zone called Chaz in which multiple people died and they're not searching for any of those people. I'm saying everyone should be found out who w led to the death of people who tried to take over federal buildings. Everyone. 14,000 plus side. arrests over the George it Floyd protests. Like you're you. saying only one side should be arrested for doing that. And the point here is, is people are going to disagree with Trump's statements and cause and find them non-factual at all. And people are going to disagree with Kaepernick's cause and find them non-factual at all. And you, who knows? We're, we're watching the case right you now. Understand, Sheldon, and he may walk. And You understand that, that the vast majority of these BLM protests, 93% have been completely peaceful? What does that have to do that with this anything? This is even close oh to my Trump. Gosh, and guess what? 99% of Trump rallies have been peaceful. Like, why, why, did, why are you Lynn, why are you trying to oh, into that Because one. I'm talking about I'm a specific saying, occurrence. I'm not the one that's trying to excuse oh, no. the... I'm not the I'm one talking, that's trying to excuse what happened at the Capitol. I'm talking... Trump rallies are peaceful. You're the one trying to because, excuse the BLM violence. Because I'm talking about a very specific riot that happened, an attempt to break into our Capitol, and and there were people there that had, clearly had the attention to kill or kidnap uh, government officials, people that are elected officials, and you're trying to paint it as though BLM is this violent movement. It seems that way, at least. Uh, okay. I feel like it's a they're reasonable way to interpret it. Was there not literally an assassination of a Patriot prayer member by a Black Lives Matter member with a tattoo of BLM on his neck within the last year? Let's please do not gloss over political radical radicalism. Do you think this is even clear? What, what is up with the I'm what about -ism? I am not doing it with the Capitol. I am saying that is wrong and they shouldn't have done that and they should have been arrested for that. The only thing happening here is you are not acknowledging the radicalism, the actual fucking terrorism and murder of individuals by Black Lives Matter, the taking over of federal buildings by Black Lives Matter, the literal autonomous zone created by radicals in which multiple people died. The Chaz in. thing was Can really you cringe. Acknowledge that and acknowledge it was wrong? Because I've acknowledged the radicalism on my side and said it was wrong. You just bite the this bullet on this. That's easy. Of course it's wrong. Of course. I don't know. I don't know much oh, about the, no. I don't know much about the, the Chaz thing. I think it was like pretty LARPy and insubstantial no. and I'm not a big fan of it. And I think that and I think that, that, and I think that rioting and I think that rioting typically is, is at the at best it's bad optics and at worst it's probably not good because because depending on where what you're about riding, murdering people? what about murdering people? What about the probably not good. man who was murdered? Not good. Probably not good. No, no not, not good. a fan of it. No, not very. Uh, okay. Don't think highly then of we it. We agree. Then we agree. Okay, so you don't. You you are you. We agree that uh, 
it is not comparable what Colin Kaepernick said to what Trump did when he was rallying his uh, fan base to attack the Capitol. I think both. I think both caused radicalism and violence, and both should be condemned. But I don't necessarily think either of them should be banned from Twitter. That's the only disagreement here is that you're being inconsistent and I'm being consistent. Okay. I'm pretty sure I've been pretty consistent, but all right. What, how have I been inconsistent? <laughs> In both instances, Trump rallied. I, I don't even, I think it's questionable whether Trump rallied up people. I don't think he rallied up people to go and cause an insurrection. That's one interpretation of his tweet, saying he potentially defended it by saying this is what happens. Oh, no. But he certainly wasn't telling people to go. To okay, fuck, the, I don't know about the tweet shit. Fuck the tweet. He, like, he literally gave a speech talking about how the election and everything was about to be stolen, talking about how Pence had failed him on Twitter earlier, and then said, all right, guys, it's only two blocks from here. Let's go, or whatever. We can go listen to the exact quote. Like, because if Mike Pence does the right thing, we win the election. Let's have trial by combat. <laughs> and after this, we're going to walk down and I'll be there with you. We're going to walk down. We're going to walk down anyone you want. But I think right here, we're going to walk down to the Capitol. And we're going to cheer on our brave senators and congressmen and women. And we're probably not going to be cheering so much for some of them. Because you'll never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength and you have to be strong. Man, what do you expect to happen? Come on, dude. And he tweeted out after, be peaceful and go home. Whereas Colin Kaepernick has- Didn't he tweet that, be peaceful and go home? <sighs> Somebody could, I don't know the timeline. I could be wrong. I admit I could be wrong on this. I don't think it's that relevant. But didn't he tweet the be peaceful and go home after they'd already broken into the fucking building? Or, like, wasn't that literally after they'd already breached the, like, <laughs> I mean, like, that's a little, little late at that point. Has actively <laughs> called for a revolution and actively called for violence. That's the difference between these tweets. And I'm not even saying Kaepernick should be banned or taken off Twitter. If they actually followed their TOS, he would. But you are trying to argue that somehow Lauren Kaepernick is consistent here, to be fair. Of this rhetoric that has led to because murder, Kaepernick that has led hasn't to people's shops being so burned down, for starters, that has led to mass riots Colin for Kaepernick. You're excusing it. Colin Kaepernick isn't the president for one. That doesn't. Two, that's not relevant to the TOS. Colin Kaepernick he still has mass out. amount of power over people and their opinions. Apparently, more than the president himself because he didn't get banned from Twitter, whereas the president has lost his voice on every platform in the country. The president had protections, TOS protections, for years. He didn't get banned until right before and he left got office. Off everything. Yes, after he and got about office because he kept on breaking TOS for doing, for and they didn't ban less, him. For doing less they than what they voluntarily, done, Twitter voluntarily didn't ban Trump violence. for breaking TOS. Trump literally, Trump has literally told his fan base to go, literally told his fan base to go home in peace. Kaepernick has not- Okay, you got it, man. Dude, fuck, I wish I was talking to his. You have to wonder, okay? If you've gotten to a point where you have to tweet, Guys, can you please be peaceful? You probably fucked up somewhere in there, right? At some point, you probably made mistakes. Like, if you ever find yourself tweeting it, like, guys, I think it's time to go home. Can you please stop, like, fucking being, like, violent? Like, you probably, something has gone very wrong, I think. Okay? Trump said, you are, Trump said, I love you. You're very special, but this is what, you all need to go home. You're very special. You're my, my beautiful little pog champs. But this is what happens when you steal the election from me, by okay. the way. So the difference, right. So the difference between the Trump tweet is Trump said, this is what happens, but you guys should still go home and not do this. And Kaepernick just said cause violence. Sure. If, if, Colin, Ka if Colin Kaepernick got banned, I probably wouldn't really care. But to be completely honest okay, with so you, you, I don't think these are even close. <laughs> do you think they're comparable? Do you think they're comparable? No, I don't. I think Kaepernick okay. is way worse. Why? Because he's calling for violence, whereas Trump was at... At worst, are, wait, maybe excusing are, it. At worst, whereas Colin Kaepernick is actively calling. Are you a consequentialist? <laughs> what does this have to do? A consequentialist is somebody who judges like how bad something is based on the outcome of doing that thing. Stop. Give me the context for it. In okay. So what Trump did resulted in a full-scale attack on our cap on well my capital 
in an attempt for an insurrection. I'm sorry, but if you think those LARPers were actually going to take over the capital, it's... Uh... What do you? Continue. When I say take over, I they broke in. They they. What do you mean by that? They were literally in the fucking building. They literally had to get shot and killed to get them to back out. Wait, how many federal officers were killed that day? Was it was it just one or was it four? I don't fuck. I don't remember anything. My brain. How many people died? Was it just it was just one right? And then a few injuries. I think. Um, was it four injuries and one death? Like wait, what do you what do you mean? You don't think people could break in? We literally watched it happen. Oh, four died total. Oh, okay, one officer and three riders. Yeah, what are you talking about, Lauren? They got him, they were looking attack. for- Yes! They were there with handcuffs. They were looking to kidnap uh, uh, public officials. There, that, There's security the camp footage. Year of and over that's the closest, buildings. that is the closest they, that, that, uh, uh, the, that's the closest the Confederacy ever got to uh, taking over the government, considering it was the first time in history that a Confederate flag flew in the American capital. So there's that. There's also security camp footage of, of security guards. It's actually crazy. There's security footage of, of the vice president having to run down a hallway because a bunch of the rioters came around a corner and they almost got him. <laughs> Someone sniffed AOC's shoes. No one was trying. They to had to evacuate it. I think what they did was wrong. The police had to shoot any, them. Four people you, died. If there's, even, if there's even a small part of you that thinks these... LARPers were going to take over the government and start, I don't know, their, their wave the mega flag and start passing laws, you're insane. Okay, I guess then I can easily respond if you think that like a bunch of BLM protesters, like, uh, what is it, eight percent, seven percent of them, if you think that, or no, not even, how many, how many percentage of them are, are peaceful? Let me just- Okay, you can't do this like six percent peaceful when there are like millions of people doing this. This is not rhetorically a strong point. Uh, let me make sure, 90, 93%. So if you think that 6% of these protests, or if you think 6% of these LARPers that are actually causing violence of these protests are gonna really harm the country, then I guess you're taking it too seriously too. Because if we're gonna apply it, then we might as well apply it equally. I take an, a full when, scale when attack on our capital way more seriously. These LARPers wouldn't harm the country. I said they weren't gonna take over the government. I think they did harm the country. As much as I think BLM has Sorry, 7%. more harm to the country, you've got this very neat trick of responding to things that I've never said. I have debate tactics. Higher debate, but uh, yeah, no, I think both harm the country, and I've been consistent on this the entire time. But I think the degree of sustained protests and violence by BLM has added up to significantly more than you've... the insurrectionists who just got way more media attention. I feel like you've deliberately tried to downplay the effects of what the um, the insurrectionaries at the Capitol did by calling them LARPers and saying they didn't even get you, close to anybody. You used the word LARP first, mate. You're the one who called the people who made Chaz LARPers, and that's when yeah. I started using the word LARP. You are projecting all of the things They're you LARPers, doing, but you're trying to downplay what they so did. Well, aren't no, you trying I to downplay the what they did? Isn't that what she's saying? But when you use the word LARP, I don't. Why are you? Why are you focusing on the word LARP? Led to the deaths of multiple people. I know. Listen, Lauren. You're I know LARP is a funny it. word. I know LARP is a funny word. It's it's fun to say. Oh God, he's being I'm not so talking about them being LARPers. I'm not oh, basically man. you calling those people LARPers. We're talking about what they actually did and what they intended to go there to do and what they and what and four people died as well. The, the the Capitol security had to shoot people because they were about to get in to an area of the building where there were elected officials. Officials and those people were there. There were people out there with guillotines and gallows there guillotines. saying to, to cut off Mike Pence's head. There were people searching around offices trying to take information from uh, uh, elected officials' laptops. There were people there with handcuffs looking to kidnap. But, um, why else did they have handcuffs? Looking to kidnap um, elected officials. I think it's pretty different. Both are bad, but pretty different than rioting in the streets. Pretty different. Okay, so once again, you have glossed over. Like, I still have not once tried to excuse the actions at the Capitol. I think that your number is potentially wrong because there were people who died of an overdose. They claimed a cop was killed by rioters who actually wasn't and had to be corrected. This had to be corrected later by the media. Uh, once again, I still have never said that that was okay. You are trying to say that. Why isn't my colony growing somehow anymore? Somehow. That is different or is this on the Mexican a mass girl? different scale 
Fine. Then all of the rioting that has gone on for sustained for over a year that has taken over multiple federal buildings led to ninety three percent of the protests have been peaceful. I condemn the rioting. I don't think and it's good. Ninety nine percent of Trump support Trump rallies have been peaceful. We're not Probably talking about Trump rallies. You're and the I'm one that brought up the comparison. About- I'm talking okay, about so, a very specific event, and you're trying to draw a comparison between a ex and I'm football talk, okay, player. And I'm talking about very specific events too. I'm talking about rioting that has been going. The on rioting is bad, and I don't support country. it. The rioting is bad, and I don't support it. Well, why are you trying to say it's because it's you're trying to? You are what happened at the Capitol when it is. I'm not saying it's better. I'm saying it's not as bad. <laughs> I'm and saying so it wasn't as bad to assassinate. <laughs> wait, 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 I'm not trying to say that this is better. I'm just saying that it's not as bad. Fascinate people to lead to multiple deaths to uh, kill. Like, I'm not talking. It's not as bad to I'm not talking about the one you're talking. Wait, why do you keep going? You're so you're switching around. You're switching around from riots to, to a very a particular. Inst- that at least is going to be repaired with the infinite government. They were trying to. Ki- they were trying to kill businesses. people. They were trying to kill people. And by the BLM way, BLM rioters successfully killed people. And I don't support that. Whenever it happens, I, I don't, don't support, support it. But why do you keep going? But how? Why is it? Why is it that you keep on bringing BLM, bring up BLM riots, and then when I go back to the Capitol, then you bring up the instance where, where like they assassinated one guy, which is horrible, and I don't support it. But you keep on trying to bring up that one instance, and I guess ostensibly try to connect it back to Colin, Ka- Colin Kaepernick, when the reason for the riot was very specifically because Trump kept on saying the election was stolen, and they wanted to punish. Our, our government officials for not keeping Trump in office. Why do you think that these are comparable in terms of who holds the responsibility for what? Because that's what this argument was because about. you've got a bunch of Black Lives Matter rioters saying we need to uh, hold the government accountable as well with literal, I've seen guillotines with Trump's head Stop in Stop saying like guillotine, it's guillotine. Where were those guillotines? Were the Capitol, when it has happened the other way around a million times. The Nevada Dems memed about it being their new fucking symbol or whatever. Sustained for over a year. Where were those guillotines? The, okay, what we're arguing here, let's get, okay, I can, people can post pictures. There have been guillotines in the streets with Trump's head attached. Where though? Not, even- not at the Capitol while hundreds of people, thousands of people are trying to break in and are specifically out to capture Ooh. And behead that okay, particular so elected representative. Somehow, somehow, Black female, we're rounding out our crew now, boys. Hell yeah. How it's worse if you take over a building aggressive with an gunnery and implants, you would terrorize and take over uh, some poor black person's shop. You think it's worse just because fucking Nancy Pelosi is in the building, but it's we're okay talking if about it's which a figure shop in Minneapolis. The reason why I this argument happened, wrong, I think they're both um, wrong. Yes, the reason why this conversation came up is because you brought up Ka- Colin Kaepernick's quote. I brought yes. up Trump's the quotes. Conversation, the conversation we're actually having is whether it's okay to incite rebellion or not. I think it's wrong. Do you Wait, is it better to be steady or aggressive? I've been this got to be steady. It, unless you can pr- prove that the government is tyrannically, uh, you know, committing genocide and severely oppressive and all these things and peaceful I said democracy better live, by is the way. not an option. And you have gone past those points of being able to have civil debate and past those points of being able to, you know, enact change in your communities. I do not think it's okay to incite civil rebellion, whether you're Colin Kaepernick or Donald Trump. What do you think? Neither are okay, but the responsibility or how much, how comparable what Colin Colin Kaepernick did to Donald Trump, the comparison there is not even close in terms of the outcome and how harmful it is. Once and again, the intention. That's not even the question here. The, the question is whether Twitter applies the TOS appropriately and whether it treats people who incite rebellion with the same uh, with the same treatment, and they don't, and I've proven that. And you're just arguing. The reason why Twitter didn't, got- the reason why Twitter didn't ban Colin Ka- Colin Kaepernick is besides being like a, I don't even think there's that much attention on him anymore. In turn, like he's not even nearly as popular and well known and being listened to as much as he was Wait, back so in like 2018. You're allowed to violate the TOS, which I don't think he is unpopular. You're asking so why? You're asking why he life. wasn't banned? Should I ask you why? Insert lefty here that called for. Uh, uh, this like hundred follower account didn't get banned. Like, of course he. Broke I'm not the, t- the one arguing that the TOS is perfect. I'm the one arguing it's imperfect. I'm not arguing that's perfect either. 
then you're where, arguing where do we... that it's been applied fairly. No, I'm not. I've never, fairly. I've never said once that the TOS okay, is applied okay, fairly. So we, so we agree. Okay. Wait, so then what are they even arguing? Okay. We're <laughs> arguing over nothing. I, I think that the problem with Twitter and Facebook and YouTube giving them this much power over people's speech. First of all, I don't think private companies should have this much power over the discourse of the country. And second of all, I don't think they apply the TOS properly and they have bias. That's what the discussion was and that's we agree on it apparently. Okay, if we if we agree on that that Trump what Trump did was deliberate and was deserving of being banned and what Colin Kaepernick did was probably something that, that Twitch could like logically ban them ban him for breaking Twitch. This is <laughs> I like how we've made no progress in this discussion. What Lauren is saying is that if Trump is going to get banned, Kaepernick should get banned. But I think Xander all is trying to argue that what Kaepernick said was okay, but that what Trump said wasn't okay. But they're like going back between these two totally separate arguments. In TOS, then I don't think we disagree, right? We disagree on that, and you know we do because you're being inconsistent. But I'm trying to move on here. Overall, you'd give the book a positive rating. It sounds like. Yeah, I like the book. It looks pre the book's pretty good. Thank yeah. you. All right. Like if you guys want to pick it up for your kids, you can get it on Amazon. The ABCs of morality. It's got a positive review from Xander All. I think I'm going to add a review on the back that says "drops mad bars," uh, and we might just change X's for Xander Hall in a uh, lefty edition we release. <laughs> If, if that actually happens, I'm going to buy it. I, I will buy a lefty edition or just in a, one single copy where X is for Xander Hall. I will buy it. OK, all right. I'll, I'll buy a second could, copy. I could actually make that happen, but uh, I'll send you a copy as a thank you for having a fun little debate with me. Are there any? Uh, how long has it been? I think it's been it's been two it's hours. Been a I couple think. hours, eh? Yeah. Are there any other last little notes you want to bring up? Because I did have a few uh, little things I wanted to work on after this, but um, I can stay to... I guess the final meme would be, uh, do you vape? I did. Oh, you and did. I'm gonna, oh. I'm, gonna, well, I'm gonna expose myself here. I actually struggled a bit with smoking for a while. Not very trad life of me, you know? But uh, yeah, I started vaping. That's pretty to trad. To, Women to want to be able to smoke. And since then, have managed to mostly, mostly get rid of both in my life. But I, I did hear you in the preamble to this that you wanted me to, to do a little vape. And unfortunately, I don't have a vape on me. So you're just gonna have to vape one out for me. All righty. I, I, I appreciate the the honestly honesty. I was curious. My chat wants you to say a phrase. Would you say trans rights? Oh no. <laughs> I think trans people should have the same rights as anyone else. Why, like, All right, that's, you know, that's, this is what equal opportunity is, you know? Yep. Everyone gets treated the same and judged on the same scale. But can, but can you say trans rights, though? People want to hear the exact sentence. Okay, well, what is, what is the, what, what does this mean on a larger scale? Because if it just means they have the same rights as everyone else, then trans rights, my dudes. All right. Can you say white rights, Xander Hall? Do white people have rights? I love white people, okay? I love white people. Uh, white rights, of course. I think everybody deserves rights. <laughs> All right. There you go. That's good. I'm glad we agree. Look at this. This ended up being a really lovely agreement with just some some friendly spats <clears throat> here and there. All righty. Did you have a fun time? I did. I had a good time. If you ever want to debate or chat about anything else, I'd be happy to. Alrighty, well, um, hopefully you have a good night. I appreciate you coming on, and uh, maybe you can come on in the future for, I don't know, maybe we can do like a, a set topic or something, like the trans issue stuff. We can talk about that yeah. more specifically if you ever want to come on again. And uh, yeah, have a good one. All right, you too. See ya. Bye. Whoa, well, okay. I think I went over as much as I could there. Sander Hall wants to talk. Um, yeah, if he wants to, let me watch this, hold on. Remember to hit that like and subscribe, and don't forget the notification bell so that my videos show up right in your feed. In my experience, women also have no body heat. Like, they, they always they always want the house turned up as hot as possible. <laughs> he's got, like, he's got, like, a basement full of female corpses, and this is actually a far darker joke than any of us realize. <laughs>